Good evening, everybody. Can everybody hear, hear me okay? Wave at the back if you can hear me. Yay, thank you. Good evening, I'm Portland City Commissioner Amanda Fritz, and I'm very happy to welcome you here to Parkhurst High School for our third comprehensive plan hearing. Uh, thank you for welcoming us here. It's great to be here in this community. Um, I'm gonna just give you a few logistical things first, but I'm gonna pass it first of all over to our great city attorney who's working tonight, uh, Lindley Reese. Good evening. Um, I need to let everybody know that there is a box of materials for the first item, uh, 1295, sitting next to the council clerk that will be entered into the record uh, placed before council. Uh, when we get to the second item, we have a second box that's marked 1296 that will be entered into the record for that matter. Thank you, so Mayor Hale sends his regards. He is hosting the West Coast Mayor's Conference tonight, so he's not able to be here. I'm currently the president of the council, so I will be um, chairing the meeting. I really like it when people call me Madam President, partly because it gives me an inflated sense of self-worth, and secondly, because I think we all need to get used to using that term, because hopefully it will happen sometime in my lifetime. So, uh, <laughs> but other than that, there are very few uh, rules and we try not to be very formal, so you don't need to give your address when you come up and testify, just your name is fine. Um, certainly want to start also by thanking Superintendent Karen Fisher-Gray. She also is not able to be here tonight, but um, she's been a wonderful member of the Planning and Sustainability Commission, uh, advocating for East Portland for many years, and so I just wanted to note um, her participation. It sounds like we're competing with what I hope is some kind of sporting activity. I hope it's not a demonstration, but we'll press on. So tonight there are two related hearings on the comprehensive plan, both continued from the previous hearings on November 19th and December 3rd, and we will have one more at uh, Self Enhancement Inc. in Northeast Portland on Jan January 7th. And the first item, 12895, adopts new and amended supporting documents. This includes a report from the Community Involvement Committee, a revised economic analysis, a growth scenario report, and the citywide systems plan. So we will take testimony on those issues first, um, and then we'll move to the second item, although I'm gonna have Carla read both items at the same time. Um, but if you're going to testify on the supporting documents, you need to testify just on the supporting documents, not on the other issues with the map and the plan. The second item, which is item 1296, is the new comprehensive plan. It includes goals and policies, land use map changes, and the list of significant project. So um, I hope you've all signed up for the item that you'd like to hear from, uh, that you'd like to talk on. To maximize the number of people speaking tonight, we are limiting testimony to two minutes each, which we did at the previous two hearings also. There's a counter that you'll be able to see when you get to the stage that uh, will beep after when you have 30 seconds left and beep frantically and have a red li light flashing when you're uh, at the two minutes. If you could please just finish the sentence that you're on at that point. The council gets really grumpy when we have people who go over time, partly because we wanna make sure that everybody has the same amount of time and that we get to hear everybody. Since there's only three of us tonight, uh, Commissioner Fish is on vacation in New York. We won't be able to take bathroom breaks, so we are going to have to uh, finish at nine even if we're not already done. Um, so also remember, this is not a popularity contest. If somebody's already said the item that you're interested in, you can just uh, either pass or come up and say that you agree with the previous testifier. You don't have to say it over and over again. The substance of your testimony matters a lot more than the number of people who say it. And you'll notice that the council will be taking notes as will our planning and sustainability staff so that everything that you put into the record will be noted and we will be responding to it. It's very helpful if you can uh, start by first your name and then specifically what are you testifying about. If it's a, a map request, give us the address of the property. If it's a policy, if you happen to know the number of the policy, that's also very helpful. If you're not sure about either of those things but you're here to just express concern, that's all right too. But if there is a specific something, if you can state it up front. And because you only have two minutes, I encourage you not to waste a lot of time thanking us for being here and thanking the planning staff for doing a good job, they have done a great job in, in a lot of cases, and you can use that your time at the end if you say that, but it's really surprising how quickly two minutes goes. I'm sure I'm already at about five minutes even just in these comments. 
And if you've already testified at a previous hearing, if you could please allow others to testify before you testify again. You may also testify in writing by emailing, sending letters, or using the online map app. If you have written materials tonight, please give them to Carla Morelove, our wonderful council clerk, and she will distribute them to us. We do have Portland Community Media who is going to is broadcasting this and you'll be able to see it on channel 30. So that's we also appreciate their input and opportunities for people to comment and they will have on their screen the email addresses and the map application address. And again, thank you very much for being involved. Commissioner Saltzman or Commissioner Novick, would you like to make any opening remarks? All right, then Carla, please read the items. Uh, also, we need to make an announcement about we do have a Spanish interpreter available if anybody needs um, Spanish interpretation services. Is there anything that you want to say? About and those folks are down on, on your left, my right. And Carla will be uh, timing so that the time of the actual speaker is the two minutes and the other, the person translating obviously doesn't count into their time. She's really good at that. Uh, está disponible interpretación en español uh, aquí en la parte de adelante a mano izquierda del auditorio. Gracias. Did you do a roll call? First, a roll call of the council, please. Novick? Here. Fish? Saltzman? Here. Hales? Fritz? Here. Item 1295 adopt new and amended supporting documents for an update of Portland's comprehensive plan, except report of the citizen involved committee. Wait, uh, the, the second one as well. I have them listed as a six and a 630. Oh, okay, so we'll just that first one. Do we have people signed up to testify on the supporting documents? I believe the sign up sheets are still out front. I'll see if someone can get them in here. Thank you, there will be a brief interlude. Yeah. When we get to testimony, Carla will tell you the number of the person, of people that she's calling, and then the next three. So if you could come and be ready, or the next four, come down and be ready. And that way you'll have some kind of uh, concept as to how long you might be waiting until your number gets called. Lindley had previously commented that being on stage makes her feel like she should break into Oklahoma. So if you'd like to do that right now, that would. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Looks like we have three people signed up for item 1295. And the first three, one or four, one, two, three, and four are Ellen Wax. Tim Helzer and Micah Miskell. Welcome, please state your name for the record and then you have two minutes. Oh, that's one other logistical detail when you get to the platform, if you can s push the button to switch on your microphone and then when you're done, switch it off so that um, others get to talk. First. Hi, Ellen Wax with the Working Waterfront Coalition. We re respectfully urge you to return to the EOA's mid-range growth forecast, the forecast that Council adopted in 2012 and the forecast used by Metro. The comprehensive plan is an aspirational document, a document full of our hopes and dreams for Portland, and a document that addresses and plans for expected growth over the next 20 years. Planning for growth, housing, jobs, and people is addressed in every part of this policy document except for harbor industrial lands. How can we have a document that addresses growth for everything but not for the harbor lands? The Planning Commission has recommended a low growth forecast as a policy choice and it's not based on data. The Working Waterfront is, is asking Council to decide differently and not make a policy choice that impacts Portland's future, our industrial harbor future, and our middle income jobs future. Why does this matter so greatly to harbor businesses? It matters because it sends a negative message, the wrong message, about what is happening in the harbor. 
Substantial investment in the harbor has occurred since the Columbia River Channel deepening in 2010, investment of more than $370 million. It matters because it will discourage opportunities for future investments by private and public entities. This low forecast will impact our ability to obtain public or private funding for infrastructure, brownfield redevelopment, and even harbor business expansion. All grant and investment concepts require future forecast information as justifications for the requested investment. We will not compete well if our own assessment of our future is not positive and is below the growth rate established by the region. And finally, it matters because the harbor employs more than 31,000 men and women and supports 29,000 more employees that are largely paid middle income wages. If there is any place in the city that leadership should urge job growth, it's the Portland Harbor. This is a place of job diversity and predominantly middle wage jobs. I urge you to change the Portland Harbor forecast back to the most likely moderate growth as originally adopted by City Council in 2012. Thank you. Hello, my name is Micah Meskel, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Northeast Coalition of Neighborhoods, NECN, of which I've been a board member for over two years. NECN represents 12 inner and northeast, north and northeast neighborhoods serving over 60,000 Portlanders. Um, we're here today to comment on the economics opportunity analysis. NECN would like to commend city staff for the direction it took in this analysis, and we feel it puts the city in a position to reach its projected industrial land needs while at the same time making our city healthier and more livable. It balances the need of industry with the preservation of our natural areas, all while revitalizing long vacant land. We applaud especially the strategies laid out in the plan that focus on redevelopment and intensification of our current industrial land base in lieu of looking to natural areas and open space to satisfy new industrial demand. Brownfields have long been an eyesore in our neighborhoods, especially um, in Northeast Portland. And we look forward to the city um, and its prioritization of cleaning these up and reestablishing these currently unused parcels of land as economic drivers for our communities. It only makes sense that we look towards these already developed parcels of land, in many cases located within our local communities, to provide us with the much needed jobs and local economic growth. We also support strategies laid out in the plan that intensify and retain existing industrial lands, which maintains and in some cases can improve the economic benefits of the current industrial inventory. Again, we urge Council to continue in its efforts to provide for industrial land in this innovative and sustainable but also practical way that puts already developed land into better use while protecting our remaining natural areas. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Tim Helzer. I'm from Hayden Island and I'm speaking in favor of your removing West Hayden Island from the industrial lands inventory. As you review the comp plan, now is the time to do three things. Permanently take West Hayden Island out of the Comprehensive Plan's industrial lands inventory. Number two, memorialize the mitigations for future protection of West Hayden Island and the rest of Hayden Island that the Planning and Sustainability Commission so wisely affirmed in August of 2013. Number three, focus instead on the serious needs of the poorly planned and built but now crumbling, unsafe, and the not ready for the future built half of Hayden Island. <laughs> Nearly two years ago, of, uh, two years of study in great detail, the port's proposed industrial development plan for West Hayden Island, the, pl the uh, Planning and Sustainability Commission got it right in August of 2013. It attached a number of very limited but protective mitigation requirements to the port's proposal and sent it off to city council. Six months later, January 2014, the port withdrew its West Hayden Island Marine Industrial Complex proposal from further consideration, claiming the mitigation requirements made it too expensive to be built there. Bob Salinger and I have almost made a career of speaking for the protection of West Hayden Island. We look forward to your considering this again as we've been fighting for this for almost 20 
years. 20 years. Bob's been at it for 19. I've been at it for 15. Now is the time to take it off the industrial lands inventory list. Thank you very much. Does anybody else want to, there's any questions? Thank you. Does anybody else want to testify on the um, supporting documents? So the uh, next item was supposed to be read at 6.30. As I mentioned, I'm feeling quite heady being president of the council. And so I'm, I'm gonna ask my city uh, attorney, is it, can we waive the rules and start the next hearing? The reason that we are, we've created time certain so that people know that it will not begin before a certain time. And I think procedurally, as much as I'm loath to have everyone sit here for 15 minutes, um, that would be the appropriate thing to do. But practically, um, people who arrive now are going to be in line for another half hour, hour anyway. So the people who are going to be first in line have already gotten here and signed up. Certainly without the benefit of having heard others, but um, I, you know, it's, it's a procedurally, it is my job to tell you that it would be appropriate to wait until 6.30. You can do what you wish. Um, and, and I'm happy to sing if that would help at all. <laughs> well, actually, one thing, one thing that I do want to do first is to change this, because I can't see the lights, so I have to listen very carefully for the buzzer to know when people are up. So okay. if we could maybe move the testimony boxes and use that to put the lights on rather than the chair, because... Watch the rope. Madam President, I would... Uh, Move to suspend the rules so that we can commence testimony on item 1296. Uh, I think we're going to suspend the rules and uh, start again and, and with all due deference to our city attorney. Don't we need four people to suspend the rules? Uh, we need four people to suspend the rules. Dang it. <laughs> I hate, sorry. I really like it when people know what the rules are, but golly, they get in the way occasionally. Um, Trying to think if there's any other creative solutions. No, unfortunately that doesn't work either. We can't just ask the crowd what they want to do. <laughs> and wants to testify about the first item. It's fairly related to the Eric suggests that somebody who didn't come to testify on one of the first two first item but could creatively make your testimony about that. Um, do we have any other announcements or uh, anything for the good of the order? Would anybody like to talk to us about anything else since we can't do anything on the comp plan for another 12 minutes? What's that? Speak on the first item. Yes, certainly, come down and talk to us about the first measure, that would be lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Well, in the, in the past and certainly on the next item, I'm going to be very strict about keeping folks on topic, but in this particular instance, if you have something interesting to say that would fill in the time, that'll be fine. Welcome, please state your name and have at it. My name is Eli Spivak, I live in Northeast Portland, and I did some history research um, about the comp plan process and found Portland's original zoning code map, which you're about to get a copy of there, from 1923. And you'll notice that I colored in, it was black and white. On the left side of the page, you can see I colored in the map based on today's zoning colors. So the blue is multifamily, the yellow is single family, and the red is commercial industrial. There are only four zones back then. And you can kind of figure out what part of the city it is by where Lad's Edition is located. I could hold this up too. I did this because I wanted to compare it to see what it is like today. And if you look at the same section of today's zoning code map, it's almost all yellow in the residential zones. There's just a little fragments of blue. That's why so much of close in Portland is built out with plexes and things like that because it was legal to put them all over Southeast Portland. 
back in the original beginning of zoning, you could only, um, you could, a single family was only a few little areas like Laurelhurst. Is this making sense, the picture? So I wanted to have that contrast because one of the housing types we most need nowadays are these small plexes. And you legally can't put them anywhere that's yellow on the map. So if you flip over to today's zoning code, draft comp plan map, you see yellow everywhere and you see little fragments of blue here and there. I'm from the Coley neighborhood. In the Coley neighborhood, there's a little thin strip along Killingsworth at the top of the page where you legally could put some affordable multifamily housing like Hacienda has done. But most places, it's illegal. And I think that I would encourage the um, city council, now that you guys are empowered with the, the blue pencil, to use it to designate more of our city blue multifamily because that's where the, we have a legacy of affordable housing in that zone from years ago. We need to create more of it now. And the best places to put it are, frankly, between yellow and red, little buffer areas around the commercial quarters. We have a step down of zoning. So I'd encourage you to let our um, staff wield that blue pencil. I'll be serving the Sustainability Commission starting in January, so it's too late for me to help wield that pencil, but you guys still have a chance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to creatively fill the next nine minutes? Oh, come on up. This doesn't usually happen, sorry about this, folks. Please just state your name for the record. Sure. Commissioner Fritz, members of the council, for the record, Joe Courtright, uh, I'm an economist in Portland. I live at 1424 Northeast Knott Street. Um, my, my professional uh, engagement right now is in an endeavor called City Observatory, which is a think tank that looks at cities and the factors that are driving city economies. We spend a lot of time thinking about um, what's driving uh, the economy and particularly the housing market in the United States. Uh, and while our focus is global, it has some important implications for Portland. Um, we're in the midst of a really dramatic transformation in the living patterns of Americans. After decades of suburbanizing and moving further away from the urban center, uh, development and, and migration is back to the center of cities. And Portland is really at the epicenter of this movement. We're seeing lots more people wanting to live in the urban environment. The demand for urban living is increasing very, very rapidly. It's increasing much more rapidly than the market can expand the supply of housing. And it's increasing generally faster than we have allowed for or imagined uh, when we were thinking about designating land for different land uses. So as you look to the future and think about the next 10 and 20 and 30 years, appreciate that the development patterns that we're gonna see are gonna be very, very different than they have been in the past. And given that very strong increase in demand for urban living, which we're seeing in Portland, unless we accommodate that, unless you expand the supply of housing in Portland sufficiently, that will inevitably drive up the price of housing. Um, and so the things that you can do to improve, to increase the housing supply in Portland are really essential to maintaining affordability for everybody. If we don't expand the supply, we'll see much, much higher prices. Thank you. Anybody else wants to come up and fill in time? When we get to the next item, I'm gonna ask you not to applaud because it just takes time between testimonies. So if, if you can do the jazz hand thing, the hum thumbs up or thumbs down, whether you agree or disagree with somebody. But I, again, we're filling in time now, so you're welcome to applaud. I think we have a group that more people that would like to talk. Should we line up or just come one at a time? Well, I don't know about that. We've got, you've, got, you've only got th uh, five minutes. So if you wanna just, uh, Push the button, or go the one that's already on. Because and then after that, we, we are going to go back to the order okay. that people signed up. My name is Dana Denny, and I've spoken to you several times before. I'm here advocating for tiny homes, and piggybacking kind of on Eli's uh, ideas of using the blue pen more, and perhaps uh, creating 
uh, a specific area or if, if you had to, a zone, whatever. And if you even wanted to experiment and have an area and try it out and see how it works out because it is a, a free way of bringing in affordable houses uh, without having to build anything, without having to spend any of your money. If you could just allow tiny homes to come into Portland in some way. Uh, I know you have your rules and regulations and I am not uh, any kind of authority on it, but I'm just asking again. So I hope you can include it in this coming up. Something in the comprehensive plan would be nice. Thank you. Uh, I guess real quickly, since I know time is very limited, I'll comment that high density. Put your density, name in the record, please. I'm sorry. Put your name in the record, please. My name is Jim Carlock. Virtually all over the world, where you have high density, you have unaffordability. Building tiny houses will not solve the problem. The only thing that will solve the problem is getting rid of government restrictions on where you can build. And I'm not talking about building in in nature preserves and stuff like that. I'm talking about building in cheap land that is just a few hundred feet, maybe a few thousand feet outside the urban growth boundary. That's what will give you affordable housing. That will put downward pressure on prices throughout the region and give us much more affordable housing. City after city, country after country, you find the same pattern. High density, unaffordability. Uh, even Hong Kong, in one of the highest density regions in the, in the world as far as I know, uh, the cost of a house is 16 times annual income. Or excuse me, that'd probably be a condo or, or buy an apartment or something. And Portland used to be affordable before we had the urban growth boundary. That is the root cause of our problem. That is why people are paying double the rent they should be paying. And by the way, the double the cost of housing. It is government policy that's at the root of the problem. Thank you. Madam President, uh, my name is Chris Brown, and I'm from the Coley neighborhood. I, I don't represent them, though. Uh, and, and what I'd like to bring up is the bonus program for uh, housing along with this. I, I love everything else about this comprehensive plan, but the bonus program where you can build an extra story or have more uh, land space that you use up for things that the community wants. And if it's something that the community wants, the community should be paying for it and not necessarily the people who live right next to one of these buildings that gets an extra story or an extra, uh, you know, space. Uh, and that's all. Thanks. Mr. Klotz, you're going to be our last person on this item. Right. Thank you. Uh, Douglas Klotz. Um, I'm just speaking in support of the growth scenarios report, getting the uh, growth along centers and corridors. I think it's the right thing to do. It contributes to complete neighborhoods, frequent transit access, bike access, BMT reduction, and greenhouse gas emissions reductions. Um, development along these corridors. This is where we're going to put the development. We need to allow the development to happen. And, um, and uh, I, the, my fellow here reminds me that the, the bonus, which is primarily to, this is, we're getting ahead of ourselves because that bonus is in the um, mixed use zones pro, uh, proposal, which would be to allow a bonus of a, a stepped back fifth floor on a lot of the corridors in order to, if, if you, the developer provides affordable housing. So that's the main, there's a couple other uh, things, but mostly it's for affordable housing. So that's something that, should be kept in consideration. You'll be voting on it later. Um, but we need to get the development on the corridors, but also a block or so on either side. We're not just limiting to the to the hundred foot depth of the lots that are right on, you know, say Hawthorne or or uh, Williams or something. But we need to go a little bit further. And this is where the the missing middle that Eli Spivak talks about. You know, it logically we would be situated if not, you know, apartment buildings, but at least something a little denser than the row house. Uh, development, which is the only thing that's allowed on those 
the the uh, the, the, the band around the uh, corridors. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is now 6.30, so we can uh, read the time certain item. Thank you very much, everybody who testified. Mm -hmm. Item 1296, adopt a new comprehensive plan for the city of Portland, Oregon. And the first three, four testifiers, please. The first four are Lori Kovac, John Denny, Carol Finney, and Peter Fry. And they'll be followed by five, six, seven, and eight, Ty Wynum, Matt Bruschetto, Tamara DeRitter, and Sally Beck. Good evening. As you heard, just push the button before and after you testify and just give us your name. We don't need your address. Thank you. So Lori. Hi, I'm Lori Kovac. I live in the area near Lone Fir Cemetery, bordered by Belmont and Stark, 26th and 30th. This is one of the few neighborhoods in the city that is proposed to be upzoned. I oppose this zoning change. This neighborhood is currently zoned completely single family. Under the proposed comprehensive plan, it will be completely rezoned to multifamily 1000 and 2000. Single family homes which were built conforming to the current zoning code could have a 45 foot tall multifamily building constructed next door to them, sometimes on three sides. I do not think this is fair. Let me repeat, a family living on a street currently zoned single family 5,000 could find itself wedged between two multifamily buildings 45 feet tall. Our neighborhood is completely built out with a majority of properties constructed before 1930. There are no vacant lots being considered for this rezoning. A building will need to be torn down for this zoning change to matter. One of the primary reasons this neighborhood works is that there are almost no buildings over two stories. Whether single family, duplex, triplex, fourplex, or apartment building. And we have all of those types of housing in our neighborhood. The fact that there is a continuity of height makes a huge difference in the quality of life for people living in single family housing next to multifamily. No zoning changes should be allowed that would change the maximum height or density of new buildings constructed on any lot. In addition to harming the single family households in the neighborhood, the proposed zoning changes would work to undermine the stated goals of the city council to protect affordable housing. If the proposed zoning changes are put into place, the buildings that make sense to tear down are ones that are currently providing affordable housing that the city says is so important to maintain. Once those buildings are torn down, affordable housing will not be constructed. The replacement properties will be market rate housing and the current residents will be displaced. Please respect the current residents of this area and leave our zoning unchanged. Uh, John Denny um, for the Portland Nursery uh, zone change or comp plan change at 50th and Stark. In 1980, the comp plan left our building in noncompliance. In 1991, the zoning code changes made on the balance of our property made us non-compliant. Prior, prior to the passage of those changes in the early 90s, we were assured by the city that, that they would address any problems with the changes, that we just needed to write a letter and that they would address them after it was passed. The review of our concerns never happened, they said because of budget cuts. In 1993, Earl Blumenauer recommended I get involved with the inner southeast zoning rewrite which I did for two years, and after two years of meetings, it too was disbanded because of budget cuts. This leaves us 35 years later still trying to uh, find relief from the earlier changes. The results of this comp plan will have dramatic consequences for our business. After 35 years, our buildings are tired. We need a zoning change consistent with our business. The conditional use process was hard in the 80s, but, it, but I did manage to do a conditional use in the 80s and it cost $1,500. The process now is next to impossible for a small business to cope with time-wise or, or affordability. Garden Center Magazine lists us consistently in the top 25 uh, best garden centers in North America. Without a zone change, I'm afraid, I'm afraid we'll be managing our demise and we would like to, we'd like for you to help us so that we can plan 
invest and be part of Portland horticulture for another 100 years. Thank you very much. Can you tell me, so is the proposed zoning what you want or you want something different? Uh, we, we would like for it not to be a split zone on the comp plan. We would like the whole property to be able to uh, have the, the uh, commercial designation for a retail business. Okay, and was this raised at the planning commission level? Yes. And then I noticed in your packet of information you were also talking about uh, Clinton and 90th Avenue. Do you want to just briefly talk about that actually, one? Actually, oh, actually oh, she's gonna, yeah. Um, oh, okay, you got it all lined up. Yeah, we got do. it. Um, the, the actually, in, in the meeting that happened in January, we did submit the testimony on time, but the Planning Commission did not get it to the Planning Sustainability Committee. So we were a line item on the agenda, but they never had our side of the story. So I think that might be part of the reason that we didn't get. That's uh, helpful to know, thank you. Yeah, I know that, that they have a lot to go through and not everybody was able to get yeah, in at exactly. that level. So, but it's helpful to me to know, did they even discuss it or did they have reasons? And so that's why I asked. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Please go ahead. I'm Carol Finney. I'm also here talking about Portland Nursery, but uh, the 90th and Division location. Uh, in the comprehensive plan or PBOTS plan is a high-speed bus line uh, that will go up as I understand, up division, over to Powell, and then uh, west on Powell. If it goes up division, um, it's gonna take away the center, center lane that's used for left-hand turns. So that would eliminate access for all the traffic coming from I-205 further east on division or 92nd uh, to get into our nursery. It has a huge impact. So I'm here this, tonight to ask if we could we happen to own land adjacent to the nursery, but that fronts on um, Southeast 92nd. It's currently uh, zoned residential. If it's zoned mixed use commercial, we would be able to create a second entrance into our nursery and therefore not be impacted by the high speed bus line. Peter Finley Fry. I'm here also on behalf of Portland Nursery. Slightly different subject though. South of the Portland Nursery on Division, the Portland Nursery owns about an acre and a half of property that is zoned for residential and we would like it to be medium density multi-dwelling to offset the residential we're asking to become commercial. <clears throat> and our argument is fairly simple that when the comp plan was built, there was no uh, light rail going to Clackamas County. We have a station uh, real close. Also, there was no Division PAL high-speed bus line, and as you heard before we spoke, there's a lot of support for higher density housing on corridors and in the appropriate location. So we have provided you a map, and we ask that you give us medium density multi-dwelling on th that property. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next four are five, six, seven, and eight. Ty Wyman, Matt Bruschetto, Tamara DeRitter, and Sally Beck. And they'll be followed by eight, nine, 10, I'm sorry, or nine, 10, 11, and 12. Ron Beck, Doug Cook, Con Fan, and Diane Gibson. Welcome, why did you get started? Hi, I'm Tamara DeRitter. I'm representing the Rose City Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, population about 10,000, and um, also the testimony for the first two items is supported by our uh, central, uh, <laughs> central Northeast neighborhood, which is eight neighborhoods. Um, and I wanted to, there's three overarching issues in the testimony that I've submitted um, to the city at this point uh, on behalf of the neighborhood. Um, number one is um, we really want you to support uh, the information that came about in the livable, livable Cities Study of 1993. This document includes the need for public parking in centers and al along corridors, and it was never implemented. And this is back when the zone was changed and there were visual preference st studies done. Well, the higher density came about, but none of the parking did. And so we're dealing with a lot of the problems related to that. 
Number one, the, the chapter uh, 9.6, Transportation strat Strategies for Moving People um, on Public Streets, it identifies bicycles as the second priority just after handicap access. But ahead of transit, carpools, electric cars, and even freight. There is a need to uh, level the playing field here. Um, the priority should be situational, depending on the maximum throughput of people. Uh, we oppose this prioritization, as in part, it is aimed at reducing Sandy Boulevard from Hollywood to 82nd, from a four-lane uh, boulevard to a two-lane boulevard by adding bicycle lanes on each side, which we oppose. Also, the uh, adding back in passenger vehicles into the Portland policy considerations. It's been dropped out, by the way, um, that and private vehicles. We have added the term multimodal back into the policy languages, language so passenger vehicles can continue to be part of the existing and future transportation policies. Also, we ask for your help in redesigning the 60th Avenue station area to promote healthy, affordable housing by moving the high density off of I-84. Thank you, Tamara. If Thank you, you could uh, give the rest of your testimony in writing. And just tell me again, what was that policy that you mentioned about the bicycles? What's the number? It's chapter 9.6. And I've got my documentation. Yeah, and if you could, ha I'll, I'll, I'll look that, that over. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name, so, my name is Sally Beck, and this is the second testimony for the East Columbia neighborhood um, on transportation. I own property in the East Columbia neighborhood and serve on the neighborhood board. I'm here tonight to talk about the comp plan that's currently under review. As I'm sure you're aware, the current proposal has many conflicts that have arisen between the Planning and Sustainability Bureau and the people who live, work, or own properties directly affected by the comp plan. In our neighborhood, such a conflict has arisen. Our property and that of my neighbors is, un is under the new plan slated to be IS, Industrial Sanctuary. None of the, these properties have a way to access industrial lands. The boundaries are such that it would be tremendously costly to try to erect a roadway designed for industrial use. And without going through an actual wetland or a mitigated wetland, it would be impossible. Ugh. Most of the other properties in our neighborhood are zoned R10 or R20. Why is it reasonable to drop a blanket zoning down on us? We have been told that although we have larger lots that could accommodate more housing, it would be prohibitively expensive to get a zoning change to do so. So much for encouraging infill within the urban growth boundaries. Do we really want to pit neighbor against neighbor and individuals when it comes to the matter of zoning, please put equal weight on the neighborhoods and individuals who are here to testify before you as you do the Planning and Sustainability Bureau because we are the ones in the trenches and we love Portland as much as you do. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Madam President, uh, members of the council. Ty Wyman here tonight as attorney for Ramon and Kamala Chetri. Uh, the Chetris live uh, at 3436 Northeast 48th with their uh, two young, excuse me, their two children. I wouldn't appreciate me calling them young. Isn't they're out in the audience tonight? I have the Chetri stand up just so you know who's really here uh, speaking to you. The Chetri Zone and Operate, the Himalayan Art and Handicraft, uh, which is also located in the city, although it's on Northwest 23rd. I rise uh, really primarily in reference to a letter I sent you dated December 4th. I also did give you a little handout tonight, which was a nice summary that my good friend, the aforementioned Mr. Fry, put together, uh, sort of bullet, bullet pointing the issues uh, with the Chetri property. Again, the Chetris are Northeast 48th. They are uh, 
right on Fremont and right across from Alameda Brewing, which uh, ha may have advantages in some circumstances, but not when you are, um, uh, not when you're a single family residential. And to illustrate, and so much of, you know, what we're trying to communicate to you uh, tonight, I think it's, it's difficult to do it in words, so we try to do it with some illustrations. The first illustration here, excuse me, here, with the Chetri's home in green, um, illustrates what has come before you from the Planning and Sustainability Commission. And they did a great job, of course. They were looking at many, many properties. But we think that they missed one here. And we think that the better uh, result at this corner would be our second illustration, which would add the Chetris to the commercial. So you would have commercial uh, on each side of Fremont at that location. You would also have commercial on each side of Northeast 48th. So you would create a node rather than sort of leaving the Chetris hanging out there with commercial on on two sides. Uh, Thank you very much. I would, yeah, we Appreciate also have we also have the neighborhood uh, support. Just Thank, to add. You. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Matt Bruschetto, and I'm I own a number of historic properties in Portland. I'm here today to propose amendments to the comp plan for two of them. I will give a brief overview and then spend approximately 60 seconds on each. The first is 822 Southeast 15th Cross Street Belmont, and the second is 2717 Southeast 15th Cross Street Clinton. Both properties had been designated for mixed-use zoning in the proposed draft of 2014 and subsequently had it retracted in the recommended plan of 2015. I provided you with maps of the proposed versus recommended for comparison. In both cases, they were one of a few properties that were retracted from the original zone change designation on these corridors. In discussions with BPS, this retraction between 2014 and 2015 was a result of the neighborhood testimony on broader blanket mixed-use zoning on the corridors and concern about protecting original structures on these corridors rather than commentary on these specific properties. Over the past 12 to 18 months, I've had ongoing communications with BPS, the neighborhood associations, immediate neighbors, and council staff to show that given the unique natures of these properties, a change in zoning actually supports preservation in one case and may support it in another. First one, 822 15th Alfred Wed property, it's a registered National Historic Landmark. I'm proposing a change from R1 to CM for the 10,000 square foot parcel, which includes four identical Queen Anne Victorian homes. Utilizing Portland's historic zoning incentives program, CM density would provide marketable transfer development rights which could draw private funding for preservation activities. My intent would be to lift the homes and redo the foundations, among other structural improvements. As a national landmark, the structures are protected from demolition. Pouring capital into them adds an additional layer of buffer. Support, included in the petition, included is a petition of 40 signatures of Buckman residents, a number of which have submitted formal comp plan testimony. I've also included a hyper-local map of residents along 15th and Belmont who have signed the petition, including homeowners of my immediate neighbors. Uh, the second change is the Amato Four Square Homes on 15th and Clinton. Uh, CM zoning would allow flexibility for the following paths. Similar preservation strategy to Alfred Webb via national landmark status and bringing or bringing commercial services to a critical corner three blocks from the Orange Line max stop along Clinton, the Clinton Bike Corridor. Thank you very much. If you could hand in your written testimony as well, that would be very helpful. Will do. Thank you. The next four are 9, 10, 11, and 12. Ron Beck, Doug Cook. Con Pham and Diane Gibson, and they'll be followed by 13, 14, or, or 13, 15, 16, and 17, Michael Sue, Brad Perkins, Stephen Keller, and Brian Richardson. Welcome. We'd like to start. My name is Ron Beck, and my wife Sally and I own a six and three quarter acre, eight, six and three quarter eight par, acre parcel at 9009 Northeast Levy Road, which is proposed to be rezoned as an industrial sanctuary. <clears throat> it's already been rezoned as a wetland and a protected zone, and um, according to Gunderson versus City of Portland in 2011, you can't do both the industrial and environmental overlay on the same parcel, yet it's been proposed. Um, another problem is that there's no access to an industrial property in there. Uh, it's a 
Levy Road is a three, eight, three block long, um, very narrow street. One car only can drive on it at one time. Uh, at the, it's a three block long street and uh, to the south is a dedicated wetland and to the north is Columbia Edgewater Golf Course. Um, it's a totally un unimproved roadway and a small one car wide strip has some paving on it. There are no sidewalks, curbs, storm drains, etc. The comp plan proposes to rezone our property as industrial sanctuary, but there is no physical access to our property. Um, <clears throat> After 18 years of complaining to the city about the uh, development of the truck uh, facilities to our south, nothing has been done even though they uh, have, are in complete uh, conflict with their um, conditional use permits. Um, they've allowed water to go onto our property and neighboring properties. Uh, they didn't plant trees to prevent uh, noise. They didn't put in a, a weir structure to carry the water away. After 18 years of complaining to the city, nothing's even been done about that. Um, Airport Futures decided that we are a wetland in it. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you two would like to pass in your testimony, that'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. My name is Doug Cook, and I am here representing Argate Terrace Neighborhood Association, which I serve as board chair. We request a modification be made to the current version of the 2035 Comprehensive Plan, which designates portions of the site on the southeast corner of Northeast 122nd and Shaver for mixed employment and R3 multifamily. We see those designations as damaging to and out of character for our neighborhood and unnecessary to the city's overall planning goals. The comp plan designates three mixed employment areas in our neighborhood, two of which we see as reasonable. The third, located at 122nd and Shaver, is an island of such use, so small as to make no significant contribution to the city's need for new sites for job creation. Mixed employment will feed car and truck traffic into an intersection, which is the main route many of our children take to school. In addition, all uses will increase substantially with completion of Beach Park and the planned bike route on Northeast Shaver. There is no demonstrated need for mixed employment use as area-wide commercial and office sites remain under, underdeveloped or if developed have a 50 plus year history of low rents and high vacancy rates. As to the R3 designated section of the site, more than 40% of our gate terrace households are now in multi-family units of which a major portion are uh, rental rates considered affordable by the city. R3 zoning itself will not guarantee that new newly built apartments will be either affordable or family units. At 40 plus percent, this ratio is well above most residential areas in the city and we do not believe it is in the best interest of our neighborhood for this ratio to increase. Adjacent to the before mentioned new city park, which we are very grateful for, are three schools offering K-12 education. And it's also adjacent to a good quality family neighborhood. This site in question is situated uniquely for single family housing. This unique and valuable resource should not be used for more apartments or highly speculative and unproven need for more office or industrial space. The association thanks the commission for city planning staff for open-minded and professional review of the plan and the recent revisions, which will help keep our gate terrace a safe and family friend uh, oriented neighborhood. We ask them for their continued help redesignating the area at Northeast 122nd and Shaver Street for R5 single family residential development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Diane Gibson. I'm here representing uh, Twilliger Plaza. Uh, the primary address for Twilliger Plaza is 2545 Southwest Twilliger Boulevard. I'm also a resident of Southeast Portland. Um, Twilliger Plaza is a not profit continuing care retirement community. We provide housing and healthcare services for seniors and uh, we've been doing that since 1962. Uh, currently we have more than 350 residents that live at Twilliger Plaza and we employ about 200 employees, uh, totaling about 155 or so FTEs. Uh, since 1962 our campus has evolved and we have added both new buildings and new services in order to meet the needs of seniors in our community. 
as a result of that change in growth since 1962, uh, Twilliger Plaza's current property sits within four different zones in the planning map. Um, and I provided some, there's a, there's a map in green of, our, uh, of the properties that Twilliger Plaza is, um, currently owns. Um, we are anticipating the coming silver tsunami uh, with the first wave of retiring baby boomers and um, they'll keep coming and realize that we will need to continue to change and grow to meet the coming needs. Um, so our existing four zones, um, ha having those four different de designations make master planning and any sort of um, future implementation and growth very complicated and extremely difficult from what I understand. Um, the more, majority of the plaza's existing buildings have an RH designation and we are requesting um, a single designation of uh, high density residential be applied to our entire property. And again, the, the information's in the, the written testimony. Thank you, do you, do you want RH or do you want RX? Uh, we're looking for RH. RH across the whole property, great, mm -hmm. thank you. And was this raised before the planning commission? Um, recently, we've have, we didn't get it in in January, but we have been working with the Planning Commission on um, our particular kind of unique concerns. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. Good evening, City Council. My name is Khan Pham, and I represent the Asian Pacific American Network of Oregon, APANO. We are proud members of, an, of the Anti-Displacement PDX Coalition, and we urge you to just say yes to the anti-displacement and affordable housing policies that are already included in the comprehensive plan. The story of Portland is a tale of two cities. First, there is a city that we are so proud of, of vi vibrant neighborhoods, parks and trees, public transit, and a national leader in sustainability. This is the city that has been created through our current comprehensive plan adopted in 1980. But Portland is also a city that we should be ashamed of because these improvements to our quality of life, this investment and development have pushed people of color and lower income residents out of their neighborhoods and out of the city. As Portland has grown, it has become more exclusive. Thousands of us are sent packing as housing costs go through the roof. With this new comprehensive plan, we stand at a fork in the road. What kind of city will we be? Will we continue down the path toward displacement and segregation, or will we put Portland on the path to an equitable future, where all of our neighborhoods are affordable and accessible for the full diversity of our people? We must change course and make Portland a city that truly works for everyone. Today you will hear from mem community members for whom Portland is not working. They have been evicted or priced out of their homes. Their communities have been torn apart by gentrification. Unless this new comprehensive plan does something dramatically different, their present reality will continue to be the story of our future. Fortunately, changing course could not be easier. Just say yes to the anti-displacement and affordable housing policies that are before you. We are counting on you to put Portland on a new path toward an equitable future. Thank you. Thank you very much. I noticed that there's about 15 people in the actual demonstration here and a, a lot more. Could you just raise your hand if you're in support of the, what was just said? Yeah. Great. Thank you very much and thank you for all of your work getting the policies in at the Planning and Sustainability Commission level. That's very helpful. Thank you. The next four are 13, 15, 16, and 17. Michael Sue, Brad Perkins, Stephen Keller, and Brian Richardson and they'll be followed by 18, 19, 20, and 22, Steve Abel, Martha Johnston, Richard Surgeon, and Stephanie Stewart. Welcome, if you wanna just push the button and then you can state your name and get going. Yeah, my, my name is Michael Sue. Good evening, uh, Councilman. I'm a small business uh, owner in Northeast Portland and I own some properties. I am in full support of your uh, new comprehensive plan, you know, for changing the zoning. I see, I think it, it does help some of the properties that are not being developed now due to uh, not being valuable just for one zoning. So I, 
I currently own a property on 7212 Northeast MLK, 7232 Northeast MLK, and 7240 Northeast MLK. The comprehensive plan gives me a rule that they accepted that they change it, but the code has not been changed. So with my talking with uh, the Neighborhood Association, they are in full support that this place needs to be changed because everything placed around there is uh, commercial, mixed use, but not my property. So they don't know why it's not been changed. And uh, to me, I can't uh, develop this property because it's, it's, it's zone residential, R5, which you build a small house, which a, lot, uh, a, a big lot on the corner of the road. Uh, if you give it for, uh, for affordable price, uh, housing, it's, it's not gonna pay you the, the mortgage that you borrow from the bank. So um, I'm, I'm pleading for the council to you know, kind of see what you know, they can help pass the code, let this code go through. We can build this, the mixed use will help give some small businesses around, and that will bring employment for you know, the small businesses or people that are, are in the neighborhood. And then secondly, it will give affordable price uh, housing for, uh, you know, on the apartments that we can build on top of this uh, mixed use. Thank section. you very much. So just to clarify, for those three addresses that you gave us, is the proposal in the Planning Commission's report what you want? Uh, the prop yeah, it's, pro it's proposed for all the three. So, and you're satisfied with the, what they've proposed? Well, I have no choice because uh, at, at, at the moment is yeah. zone No, I just want to make sure that yeah, you're exactly. not asking for a change. Exactly. You're asking for us to do what they said. Exactly. Great. Thank you very much. It's yeah. very helpful. So I have some documentations that uh, the Neighborhood Association actually is in favor of and that And if also. you can give that to the council clerk, that'd be great, or send it to the Planning Bureau. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Stephen Keller. I live at 5034 Southeast Belmont Street, and I'm here to address the proposed zone and map change to that address. I've been residing at that address for 20 years, and uh, I... Uh, support the change from uh, the current R5 to R2. Um, I'd also, you know, since Eli came up and made the point about the blue color on the maps, I'd like to uh, reinforce uh, his position. I've seen property that Eli's developed uh, in, in uh, the Cully neighborhood, and it's uh, <clears throat> very nice housing. It's very appropriate for the neighborhood. It's probably consistent with the community design standard. And I would uh, <clears throat> propose that this property uh, be considered for R1 uh, in addition to the current proposed R2. Uh, it's, it's on Belmont, which is a, a uh, major transit route. It's very appropriate. My wife and I have commuted downtown to Portland very easily over, over the years uh, by uh, mass transit. And it's, it's appropriate for that type of, of housing. Thank you. Push the button. Good evening, I'm Brad Perkins. Uh, I'm here mainly to talk about two uh, congestion relieving corridors that will help uh, relieve uh, global warming. The good news of the North Northeast Quadrant Plan is that in the plan, they suggested that there needs to be more study for a high-speed rail station stop at the Rose Quarter. The bad news is that uh, most of the time that we spent talking at the North Northeast Quadrant Plan was about the I-5 corridor and how it should be expanded, and there is no uh, plan up to this day as to how that still will be done. TriMet today is initiating a study to revamp MACT and bus uh, connections just south of the Rose Quarter. I encourage the city to work with TriMet to help make it a regional transportation hub for not only transit, but for cars, bikes, pedestrians, and water taxis. With this type of planning connected to a new HSR station nearby will encourage misuse development in the area. 
How might com commuters travel from Tualatin to the Rhodes Corridor in the future in 11 minutes? Or Vancouver in six minutes? Well, and, and you can guarantee every day with frequent service. Well, the, the way we can do that is we can build a commuter express system in the same double track electrified exclusive corridor for high speed rail trains going to Seattle or Portland in half the time that you can do it by car. The other corridor is the new plans for Sullivan's Gulch uh, that need to be developed. The plans were approved by you guys uh, in July 25, uh, July 25th, 2012. But it's past the time to fund an engineering study. We really need to get on board with this. It will be connecting all north-south bicycle routes in the area. And we'll begin the discussions with Union Pacific that are very important for uh, high-speed rail uh, connections and also for uh, this plan. We need to get moving on it. Thank you for the time. Hello, I'm Brian Richardson. Uh, I'm, like my neighbor earlier, also speaking out against the upzoning of the region between 26, Southeast 26 and Southeast 30th between Belmont and Stark from R5, R2.5 to R2 and R1 housing. Uh, under the new comp plan, the entire area would be changed to this higher density, which allows up to 45 foot apartment buildings in a neighborhood that's made up mostly of one and two story houses and duplex, duplexes. Um, I think the blue pen was brought out, but it was only placed exactly on my neighborhood. This entire area is made up of the same mix of housing, and I don't understand why my particular four by four block area was selected for these changes. The changes go against the stated goals of the comprehensive plan, which says, which says growth will be focused in centers and corridors. It does not describe my area. Our, my neighborhood streets are not corridors. Um, one argument I've heard is that the rezoning is to allow current apartment buildings to conform to zoning regulations. However, the 35 single family homes in this small area would all convert to multi-dwelling, mostly R1. So if someone can tell me how you can fit five units into a turn of the century four square, I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, if you wanted to build five units in that lot, you would have to tear that house down. So if that isn't the goal, if the goal here isn't to tear down historic properties, then I don't understand why they need to be rezoned. So my neighbors and I have talked a lot about this the past few weeks. We know that it's wrong for our area. We hope that you're listening to us and will reconsider this and not target our specific four by four block area for tear down and reconstruction while leaving all of our neighbors alone. Thank you. The next four, please come on up, are 18, 19, 20, and 22. Steve Abel, Martha Johnston, Richard Surgeon, and Stephanie Stewart. And they'll be followed by 23, 24, 25, and 26. John Larson, Terry Parker, Mark Hoffman, and Laura Pro Prozaza. Welcome, please start. Just push the button. And number 22, would you like to go? Okay, so I'm Stephanie Stewart and I'm with the Mount Tabor Neighborhood Association and I am speaking on behalf of that Neighborhood Association tonight and we are bringing you two issues. I will address one, John Larson will address the other. Um, and I'm specifically focused on a one block stretch on Hawthorne between 50th and 51st. In the last 35 years since the comp plan was written, we have seen uh, our neighborhood evolve naturally and we have noticed now that that natural evolution of wear patterns isn't always in alignment with what the comp plan predicted. And we see this at that one block stretch between 50th and 51st. So when the comp plan was written, the lots lining Hawthorne were all zoned commercial and they were done so at a similar intensity level all the way up to 51st. However, there is an obvious transition that happens at 50th in Hawthorne. That transition is reinforced in the transportation classifications. The transportation classification actually steps down two levels at 50th in Hawthorne. So it goes down from a district collector past a neighborhood collector down to a local uh, street uh, access. 
And it's also that transition right there at 50th and Hawthorne, Hawthorne has also been reinforced in other public processes that our neighborhood has participated in, including the multi-year Hawthorne transportation plan process. Um, I actually, I have some documents, I'm sorry, I forgot to give these to Carla, that will show you photographs if you'd like to see how the roadway directs, diverts traffic from continuing east on Hawthorne and actually begins to drive people um, south on 50th at Hawthorne there. So again, it's an obvious transition at 50th, yet, and today the properties between 50th and 51st are all commercial and they're built out, a, a built out at a rev, re, relatively low level of commercial intensity, very much the old Main Street feel of one and two story buildings and they, um, they work nicely with the neighborhood. The, uh, the relationship between those properties in the neighborhood is great. It's an amenity level and a nice feel. We're so advocating that we can maintain the commercial there, but that we would prefer a lower level of commercial intensity for the designation between 50th and 51st. And what designation are you asking for? Um, whatever is the lowest level of commercial, and we're still a little unclear on what that is. I believe it's CM1 f underneath the mixed use new definition. Got it, thank you very much. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Steve Abel. I'm an attorney with the Stoll Reeves office. Tonight I represent the Bill Nato Company, and the Bill Nato Company is the owner of Montgomery Park, an office building located on Northwest Vaughan in Northwest Portland. Um, that property is currently zoned EX and has had EX zoning for many, many years, probably decades, or as long as EX has in, been in place. It's a 20-acre site, which is actually quite surprising. It doesn't feel like a 20-acre site, but that's a very large site. And it's not in an industrial sanctuary. Uh, Mr. Nato, when he, when he rehabbed the old warehouse that was there, Montgomery Ward, took a substantial risk, and he had lots of investment-backed expectations about what would happen in the future. BPS proposes two amendments to that site, uh, both of which uh, the Bill Nato Company opposes. First, it proposes that the property be downzoned uh, to EG2, and at the same time, the EG designation be amended as a matter of text to eliminate residential uses. We've seen EX used throughout the city to, to create some of our best mixed-use neighborhoods. EX does that, EG does not. Without that residential component, we'll see a site that will become stagnant, will end up being an office building with a sea of parking surrounding it and nothing more. And you must remember this is a 30-year plan. We're looking to the future, trying to find opportunities. This is a perfect mixed-use site. It provides something that most of the sites don't offer, which is uh, the non-residential component already being in place. It provides an opportunity to add the residential component uh, and provide that mixed use environment. I was struck by Mr. Courtright's testimony earlier where we need to look for opportunities to provide residential use in this city and this is a very important uh, piece of property to provide that residential use over the next 30 years. So our ask is simple. It's to leave the existing zoning in place, EX, and allow this property to develop to its fullest capacity. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Abel. Was this discussed by the Planning Sustainability Commission? It was, Commission? yes. And what was their reason? I, I was not there. My client was there and presented. I don't know what the okay. conversation was. Thank you. Martha Johnston. Martha Johnston with the East Columbia Neighborhood Association. Good evening, Commissioners, Madam Chair. Um, I'm a residential board member, uh, a resident and board member of ECNA, and I'm here to present the second phase transportation and access issues that are further reasons for our request to change the comp plan designation of the properties. You see the map before you again, you, you may recognize it so that we can talk on the same the same page uh, on Northeast Levity Road from Industrial Sanctuary to Residential R20 designation. The homes in this area gain access to the public road system only through Northeast Levy Road. You can see it in red, Northeast oh, Levy Road. I'm just going to interrupt you. We've seen, the, uh, heard about this property. Is this new information? Yes. Yeah. Well, we haven't presented it yet. It seems like we've heard the same issue at, at the previous two, two meetings as well. We were talking about 
open space at that time and environmental zones. Okay, I keep going then. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure that this mm -hmm. was new information. Mm -hmm. um, there is, uh, the road is a narrow two-lane uh, local streets without full improvements. There's no outlet to the east because of the major drainage slough. You can see the west to the to the east, the uh, Pen 2 Canal. There are no outlet to the, um, Northeast Gertz Road contains a major truck barrier. Uh, it's a tight radius traffic circle, so trucks can't get in through the area. That keeps industrial traffic out from the neighborhood service streets. It's constructed to keep that out. Uh, Northeast 13th is posted, no truck signs at the Northeast Marine Drive. Therefore, there is no legal large traffic route to this area from the north. And B, the industrial property to the south has existing frontage and access necessary for the truck traffic on a portion of Northeast 13th Avenue of the unimproved part of 13th, which effectively disconnects the industrial traffic from the residential streets to the north. Um, I'd like you to look at map two, and you'll see at the, you follow Levy Road down on the right to the seven parcels you'll see a blue in the industrial area. That is wetlands mitigation for the industrial development when it in, went in in the 80s. Therefore, it therefore further restricts any hope of ever having any access to those parcels for an industrial development. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rick Surge, and I'm one of the property owners on this proposed site for zone on an IS zone change, I'm totally opposed to it. I am very much in, uh, want the property to go R20. I've been lived here for 45 years. I've seen nothing change in the, in the immediate area of the residential property except more residents. I give you pictures there. If you look at the fold out, shows all of Levy Road, all the houses on. Yeah, that's the one you have in your hand there. Shows all all Levy Road, it's all zoned R20 on the whole thing. From one end to the other, it's either R20 or farm and forest. And there's just no access for industrial property, as she said. And it's just can't be done. Um, I've, I've majored the road. At, you'll see a new map there, or the city map, that shows the, the new um, housing development that was put in. That's 300 feet from my property. 300 feet, and uh, it just can't be industrial. It, there's no way it can be accessed that way. I've bought this property for retirement. If I'm not allowed to put even one house on three acres other than the one I have, I'm, I'm done for, basically. I'm really just asking it to be, the R20 zone to be allowed. Uh, the road is 10 feet wide. Uh, there's pictures there that show the end of Levy Road right at the end of my property. And um, I don't know what else to say. I'm getting tongue, twi tongue twisted. <laughs> I haven't read anything of what I said. All I know is all of Levy Road either has R10 or R20 from one end to the other, except for our properties, five properties that are farm and forest that you want to turn into industrial sanctuary, which would be right up, butt up against R20 anyway. Can't happen. Thank you. Thank you. The testimony both tonight and on previous occasions has been very compelling on this, so this is definitely on our radar. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. <laughs> done, I think. Okay. Three quarters of it's surrounded by wetlands and a buffer zone that can't that prohibit it. The next four are 23, 24, 25, and 26. John Larson, Terry Parker, Mark Hoffman, and Laura Peraza. Peraza. Sorry, and they'll be followed by 27, 28, 29, and 30, Eli Spivak, Mo Farhood, Ronnie Mastin, and William Bittar. Good evening, go ahead please, John. Thank you. John Larson, uh, on behalf of the Mount Tabor Neighborhood Association, um, I'm actually here to testify on the same Portland Nursery on Stark Street issue that you heard about earlier. Uh, the um, Mount Tabor Neighborhood Association has voted to support the staff report on that property, which maintains the split zoning, but recommends that the um, 
uh, non-conforming use on the residential portion of that uh, be changed to um, uh, conditional use. And it also extends the commercial zone by 123 feet so that um, depth into the property so that it gives it, makes the commercial zone much bigger, but it maintains the residential uh, cat, um, classification on the south side of the property. Um, we, as a neighborhood, we uh, overwhelmingly support Portland Nursery. We want them to continue in business. We love them. We have expressed that to them um, directly. And we've met with them several times about this issue, but we cannot condone the idea of turning that whole property into commercial because if it's all commercial, then that potentially opens the door for um, uh, it becoming more valuable for some kind of other development rather than nursery. So um, uh, the risk of of that in relationship to the, re the surrounding residential property would really change the character of the neighborhood. We believe that the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability staff has done an excellent job of finding a middle path by, by extending the commercial zoning and changing the non-conforming to conditional use. We think it's an elegant and well thought through proposal and one that is good for everyone involved. The staff report will improve the zoning situation for Portland Nursery while offering continued protection for the character of the Mount Tabor neighborhood and the surrounding residential uh, area. And we hope that the City Council will see the wisdom of this carefully crafted solution. The owner's agent, Peter Fry, who you also heard from, has proposed a possible uh, special designation of some sort for nursery properties within the city. Um, that would allow outright use as long as the property remains a nursery, but that would revert to residential zoning at such time as the nursery use goes away. And we would happily support such a thing. We are open to working with the BPS staff and the nursery owners to seek such a creative compromise. But if that kind of special designation is not possible, we respectfully request that the City Council uphold the staff proposal. Thank you. I really appreciate explaining both sides of the issue and obviously another site that needs some more discussion. Yeah, Thank you. and we would love to work with them on that. Thank you. Terry? Uh, Terry Parker, Northeast Portland. I've got my own hat on today. Uh, even though a metro survey clearly shows a clear public preference for single family homes, upzoning related to the comp plan in working class neighborhoods virtually gives the bulldozer operators a license to plow through, demolish, and destroy numerous entire blocks of single family homes. Please take a look at map A on the second page of my handout. In my neighborhood, Rose City Park, there is a large swath of properties proposed to be upzoned near the 60th Avenue Mac station. This portion of the neighborhood includes affordable starter homes, well-kept working class single family homes, many of them in better shape than the Portland building, and a few duplexes and multifamily units that are scaled to fit within the single family homes. Now take a look at the left side of the same map. You will notice that no upzoning is proposed for the more affluent Lawhurst neighborhood, which has a direct pedestrian connection over I-84 to the Max Hollywood station. With map B, you will, know, you will also note that there is no upzoning for the even more affluent East Moreland neighborhood near the new Bybee Max station. I am not suggesting that any portion of East Moreland or Lawhurst be upzoned, but neither should upzoning apply in a single family home area of working class neighborhoods such as Rose City Park. The mere fact that low income, working, low income and working class neighborhoods are proposed to be upzoned while affluent neighborhoods that have similar proximity to a MAC station escape up zoning demonstrates bias, discrimination, it fosters more limits on the opportunities for the less than affluent classes of people to make an investment in home ownership, and it could be construed as a departure from neighborhood ver diversity. Working class single family home neighborhoods deserve the same equal protection as the affluent neighborhoods. In conclusion, I oppose the proposed wholesale up zoning of the single family home neighborhoods that are contiguous to the 60th Avenue MAC station. This mass upzoning needs to be rejected. Thank you. Uh, Madam President, members of the council. Thank you. Uh, you my name is Mark on. Hoffman. Um, I'm uh, listed as uh, testimony number 25. Um, uh, my organization, Garden Homes, uh, owns a parcel of land at the corner of 122nd and Northeast Sandy Boulevard. Uh, I'm the Director of Development and Management and been overseeing this property for uh, close to 20 years. Um, 
we've previously communicated by letter to the council describing our concerns with the comp plan designation, and I've also had the opportunity to meet with uh, three council staff as well. Um, to summarize, uh, the problem here as we see it is that we have a retail center that we've been operating since the early 70s and it has been designated as employment under the comp, the comp plan. Uh, the problem as we see it is that um, we're a national company that focuses on mixed use residential and retail. We have the resources and the expertise to transform the site to a redevelopment when the time comes into a modern retail center to provide services and employment to the surrounding neighborhoods. These centers often include housing, which is prohibited by the employment designation. Uh, what we see as the solution and what our request is to uh, the council is to apply the mixed use civic corridor designation, which is consistent with the abutting properties um, that currently adjoin us. Um, we've reached out for the Park Rose Association as well, and they'll be making comments through the website. Uh, I've submitted a summary of our testimony to the clerk, and I've incorporated a, a number of uh, photos of recent redevelopments we've done um, to show the council what we're capable of and what we see as a, a possible future for that parcel in the future. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Laura Peraza y vivo en el vecindario de Cooley y Killisworth. Uh, good evening, my name is uh, Laura Peraza, and I live in the neighborhood of Cali and Kellenysworth. No lo puedes traducir solo así porque me va a llevar todo el tiempo. Um, the, um, no, no van a contar el tiempo que, que yo estoy hablando. Oh, okay, okay. You're, you're not going to count the time that I'm speaking. Right? Okay. Um, quiero decirles que yo soy parte de la coalición de antidesplazamiento PDX. I'd like to say that I'm part of the anti-displacement PDX coalition. Uh, queremos pedirles que aprueben ese plan para que con todas las polizas que hemos recomendado este uh, quiere, queremos que ustedes lo, lo aprueben. We would like to ask you to approve this plan with all of the policies that we've recommended. We would like you to we'd like you to approve the plan. Um, y también tengo un grave problema en el vecindario. Yo vivo en las trailas de Arbor Park. And I also have a serious problem in my neighborhood. I live in the Arbor Park trailers. And y cuando me moví el en enero pasado, una parte de esa área no tiene luz, las calles. And when I moved to that area last uh, January, a part of that neighborhood didn't have light. Y ahorita la otra parte ya no tiene luz. Entonces estamos en completa oscuridad desde hace como tres semanas. Solo la, la parte de la calle de enfrente es lo que tiene luz. And now the other part of it doesn't have light either. We've been in complete darkness for about three weeks. Only the part on the front part of the street um, has any type of light. Y entonces estuve dando también mi queja acerca de un árbol que tengo encima de mi traila y mi amiga me, me ayudó a leer el, el, el contrato de renta que tengo y ella me dijo que es un grave problema seguirme quejando porque en la, en la renta que tengo me están diciendo que en cualquier momento ellos me pueden sacar. And so I also have another, uh, I've been complaining about a tree that's been above my trailer and a, a female friend of mine was helping me read the contract and she was telling me that uh, the rental contract and she told me that I could have a serious problem if I continue to complain about it because at any time I, uh, the owner could kick me out. Entonces, y también quiero decirles que no tenemos un acceso, el, por ejemplo, si se, si se encendiera una de las trailas o pasara un accidente a alguien, eh, cuando lleguen los bomberos ya toda esa área ya estará terminado, ya estará eh, eh, extinguido, porque no um, hay un acceso rápido de, de tráfico en esa área. And there's also an access, there's an access problem. So, for example, if a trailer caught on fire or if an accident happened to someone, by the time the fire department arrived, it would all be extinguished. It would already be finished because there's uh, not quick access to that area. Entonces, yo hablé a alguien de ustedes, hablé a, a los de la ciudad, y el de la ciudad me dijo que desafortunadamente las, los parques de casas móviles no hay muchas leyes para ayudarnos con estos problemas que tenemos. 
And I talked with one of you guys, I talked with someone from the city, and they told me that unfortunately for the, uh, when it comes to mobile homes, there's not a lot of, of laws. Uh, y no hay muchas leyes, ¿y qué más? Uh -huh. okay. Para poder eh, hacer regulaciones. It's in order to make, uh, to do regulations. Uh -huh. Entonces, y ese árbol que está en la parte de atrás de mi traila es del vecino, ni siquiera es del parque. Hablé al arborista y el arborista me dijo que este, um, no, ellos no pueden hacer nada. And so that, that tree that's behind, it's not even my tree, it's my, that's above my trailer, it's, it's not even my tree, it's a neighbor's uh, tree. And so we called the tree specialist, and the tree specialist told me that they, they can't do anything. Que no pueden hacer nada. Uh -huh. Entonces, Thank you very much. Your time is gracias. up. And I, I really but I didn't appreciate it. Go ahead, finish up. But she was interpreting for me. I know you had the extra time for that too. And what I wanted to tell you while I have an interpreter is that many, some of the issues that you raise are very much connected with the comprehensive plan, the policies are very, and there is a policy about manufactured homes and the value of their affordability. Uh, happily, you have the housing commissioner here who will, uh, can help with the um, problems with complaining to your landlord and the transportation commissioner who can help with the lights and, and then I'm in charge of the tree issue. So there's other ways to get uh, your needs addressed and we can, uh, you could uh, ask the city staff at cityinfo.portlandoregon.gov uh, uh, and they can help you with those other issues. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thank you all for being here also. Thank you. Gracias. Okay. Uh, was Eli Spivak, were you speaking again? No. Okay, thank you. Then we'll go with 28, 29, 31, and 32. Mo Farhoud, Ronnie Mastin, William Batar. Oh, and actually we'll do, I think two people signed up under 31, William Batar and Eric Shoemaker. Then we'll go with Richard Dixon, Brent Carpenter, Sid Scott, and Rob Rochelt. 32, 34, 35, and 36. Welcome, if you'd like to start, go right ahead. Mr. Farid. Good evening. Good evening, my name is Mo Farhoud. Um, I wanna get my glasses, sorry. I own a second chance landlord and Stark First Management. We help people with eviction and conviction and people cannot find apartment. We work with the Home Forward and all other housing advocate in Portland. We owe total 500 apartment. We house 800 people total. By changing the zoning from, for us from R2 to R1 will help us to create another 500 new apartment. Low income. Our company very involved in the neighborhood from Rosewood Initiative to the community garden and other neighborhood schools. I will be glad if we get this change so we can help people to create more low-income housing. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ronnie Mastney, and I own a home on 168th, and I also happen to work for Stark First Management for 11 years. Um, we are a second chance landlord, and we do help those who have background issues. Um, to change from R2 to R1 would help us increase units at the properties we already own. There are some properties that have room to build more, a, a new building, but most, most likely we would have the, the one layer, the one level apartments, we build a second level on top of that, and instead of building a whole new complex, we can increase what we already have. So the high density would be extremely important on doing that, to increase the density. Um, the area we're talking about is from about 139th to 187th? 162nd. 162nd. And those are the areas we would like to have the zoning increase on. And it would, 
again, help to increase more apartments. Right now we have maybe 40, 50 vacancies on the board and they're rented for, within a three month period and we're still turning people away. So um, the need for housing is great and we have a solution. If the city would rezone us, we could do it. Thank you very much. And was this request made to the Planning and Sustainability Commission? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, was there a William Batar, Eric Shoemaker? Okay, we'll go with uh, Richard Dixon, Dick Dickinson, Brent Carpenter, and Sid Scott. 32, 34, 35, and 36. And they will be followed by 37, 38, 39, and 40. Arlene Williams, Pete Adams, Katrina Holland, and Ben Earl. My name is Richard Dickinson, and tonight I'm representing the Powellhurst Gilbert Neighborhood Association, who's voted to, which has voted to voice strong support for the downzoning that the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability has uh, proposed for parts of our neighborhood. Most of our neighborhood was pretty rural a couple decades ago. As part of the 1996 Outer Southeast Community Plan, much of Powellhurst Gilbert neighborhood was zoned much more densely than many places closer to downtown. There was, unfortunately, there was little forethought about the environmental considerations of building on s houses on steep slopes and liquefied soil, and there was little forethought about how we would add or pay for the connectivity and the infrastructure needed to support that kind of increased population in our area. In the last 19 years, we've seen little in the way of infrastructure investments and the combination of increased density and uh, lack of infrastructure has caused the quality of life for most of our residents to plummet. These are, this is what we fear for our future. Our streets are in poor condition and not well connected. Most of our neighborhood lacks sidewalks. Safe passage to schools, parks, and grocery stores is both difficult and distance. We love the new sidewalks on 136th and 122nd, thank you. We see people walking on them daily. We need so many more. Our school po age population has burgeoned about five times the statewide average, and our schools are bursting at the seams with little capacity to serve more. The number of children receiving free or reduced lunch has increased dramatically. An example would be Ron Russell Middle School now serves free lunch to 100% of the, their population just because it's efficacious to do so. Um, Close to 80 languages are spoken at home in the David Douglas School District, which makes for wonderful diversity. And yet, this is a challenge to the social fabric of our area until we can catch up with the change. These are some of the factors that the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability took into account in proposing the parts of our neighborhood should not be zoned as densely as the city planned in 1996. Thank you for your consideration. Good evening, uh, Madam President and Commissioners. My name is Brent Carpenter. I'm testifying today at our pro uh, about our property at 3905 Southeast Main Street. Uh, my wife and I are residents of Southeast Portland and have owned this rental property since uh, 2003. Uh, when the proposed comprehensive city plan came out earlier this year, we had expected this property be ch to change be, to be changed from our 2.5 to commercial mixed use because it uh, sits on a busy commercial corner of Southeast Cesar Chavez and Main Street, which is, there are three other properties on that uh, corner, which is Fred Meyer, U.S. Bank, and DeLotte Restaurant. Uh, our property is the only uh, uh, commercial zoning exception on that corner and th that intersection. Uh, we believe it makes sense to extend the commercial zoning to embrace our property corner and complete the node for that intersection. Uh, 3905 Main Street sits on one of the busiest corridors in southeast uh, Portland. Uh, and it meets all the criteria for commercial mixed use designation. It, it's, it's close to a central city with multiple public surface, services available, including access to extensive public transporta uh, transportation along southeast uh, Cesar Chavez and Hawthorne. Uh, it's also very pedestrian oriented with robust street level activity because of the existing businesses on that corner and in the neighborhood. 
We're asking the council to uh, reconsider the current 2.5, R2.5 zoning for 3905 Southeast Main Street and propose changing the designation to commercial mixed use urban center. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President and Councilors. My name is Sid Scott, and I am the owner of the property at 2525 East Burnside, Portland, 97214. Uh, I have owned and occupied this property for 10 years uh, with my architectural practice, Scott Edwards Architecture. Uh, the property is part of the proposed comp plan and uh, would change from the current medium density multi-dwelling zoning to a mixed use urban center. And uh, I am here tonight to fully support the zone change with two enthusiastic thumbs up. Uh, I would submit my thumbs if that would help uh, uh, to the record. Uh, this change will allow me to grow my practice uh, in a location that we absolutely love uh, and continue to be an active part of our vibrant neighborhood. And I thank you for considering the change. Yes, uh, uh, members of the council, my name is uh, Bob Rossholt. I own the property at 323 Northeast 156th Avenue. Uh, I support the um, uh, recommended zone change there, um, and I actually came to flesh out just how important that is. Uh, the property encompassing the 323 Northeast 156th Avenue residence is on a street extending four blocks from Northeast Gleason to Northeast uh, Cooch. In that short distance, there are three abandoned and boarded up houses that are an economic liability due to prior drug use, deterioration, and future demolition costs. Three other houses are occupied, but rents on two barely defray costs and costs to improve could never be recovered. This is underutilized uh, land. Um, the remaining house carries a debt in excess of value and there is considerable undeveloped land. This area needs a street, curbs and sidewalks to facilitate improvements. My wife and I own um, the, um, uh, my wife and I purchased this property to terminate the drug activity of those residing at 345. For four months, the bank refused to finance this um, uh, purchase until we demolished 345. I had already put 40,000 into 323 to make it fit to rent prior to ownership and persuaded the bank to allow me to remove utilities and board it up to avoid demolition costs. Best use of this underutilized property is with the R2 zone that you um, recommend. The zone provides an occupancy density that is neighborhood friendly. A garden court layout creates a collective backyard and a secure social setting for the tenants. This density also accommodates off-street resident parking and still can achieve a landscape density superior to what is found on most single-family residences. My wife and I own the property zoned R2 that are adjacent and immediately north. Done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just if you're here in support of, of what's in the Planning, Sustainability Commission recommend, Planning and Sustainability Commission's recommendation, and unless there's going to be neighborhood opposition, you can just tell us that because we're not likely well, to pick a bone I with I was trying to show how important it was yeah. to get the, I didn't get to it, to get the street in also, curbs and sidewalks, and uh, so that that whole street can be improved. It's it right next like to a, a grade school. Sounds like a great site. Thank you very much for coming in support. Okay. Next four, please. Arlene Williams, Pete Adams, Katrina Holland, and Ben Earl, 37, 38, 39, and 40. And they'll be followed by 41, 42, 44, and 45. Joseph Corey, Tawny Kim, Matt Thomas, and Claudia Koff. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is Arlene Williams. And my husband and I are representing 11 homeowners and re residents of eight properties on a short dead-end block of Southeast Henry Street in Woodstock, just east of uh, Southeast 52nd Avenue. Um, and in my materials, uh, the list of names is on the third page, and there is a map of the short block on the fourth page. Um, the block is in a zoning review area, and the 13 R5 properties have a comp plan designation of R2.5. 
This street is already built with as much density as it can hold. There are R2 zoned apartments and a duplex on this block as well as flagged lots. The infrastructure of this dead end street with only one exit does not support any greater density. We are asking that the R2.5 designation be removed for this block. According to chapter 33.641 under transportation impacts, issues of safety street capacity and parking impacts must be considered for this block of Southeast Henry as follows. Number one, increasing density on Southeast Henry would add stress to this already congested street. Five years ago, TriMet stopped sending their small lift buses to pick up my visually impaired neighbor. The street was too congested because of the amount of parked cars on the narrow street and no turnaround capacity. They classified her residence as non-accessible and now they must send small sedans or taxis to pick her up at greater cost. This demonstrates in a concrete way that street capacity has reach, been reached and more density should be avoided. Um, also, um, number two, this dead end section of Southeast Henry Street is 471 feet long with no adequate turnaround for fire apparatus, garbage trucks, package delivery trucks, or utilities trucks. These trucks must back all the way down the narrow street and uh, between the parked cars and they must back onto Southeast 52nd. If you add more density, this is going to uh, make compound a very dangerous situation. Thank you very much for giving your testimony and writing. I have to say this map is one of the best I've seen in terms of okay. spelling out who's supporting, who's, you know, what this right. situation is. So thank you very much. It's very clear. And my husband will continue. Okay. Because the street is within 500 feet of a transit street with 20-minute peak hour service, no off-street parking would be required of new development under uh, a 2.5 R2.5 zone. Street parking is already stressed by the duplex and the apartments on the street, the flag lot driveways, and the shared housing situations. If more units were built that did not require off-street parking, or if existing off-street parking were removed, since that would be permissible, to allow more units to be built, then parking would be impacted beyond capacity. There's no adjoining block for parking to overflow to. Uh, 52nd Avenue does not provide many safe parking options and there's no street directly opposite on the west side of 52nd either for residents to use as parking options. And also this area of Portland's got a high incidence of car theft and car burglaries that make it unwise to park a car blocks away without owner's oversight of the, of the owner. Um, I would also like to point out that in case of fire or other public safety events, there's only one exit from this street. At the dead end, there is a tall metal fence atop a block wall, and there's a small pedestrian gate that leads to the church parking lot, but this is locked, and there's no safety egress to the east. It would be absolutely irresponsible with the City of Portland to increase the public safety hazard on the street by allowing greater density through the R2 zoning, R2.5 zoning, I'm sorry. So a maximum building height would rise to 35 feet, which for a flat, flat roof contemporary styled structure would be beyond the ladder capacity of regular fire trucks. The taller ladder trucks could not navigate the street with, with its inadequate width and no turnaround. And even if there were a mitigation uh, by sprinkler systems in the tall buildings, there's not enough adequate resident evacuation capacity in case the fire started in a structure to the west of any particular residence, you'd know you know, they wouldn't be able to get out. So we don't believe that developers should have the unchallengeable right to add to this problem by being able to increase the density and reduce off-street parking. My name is Katrina Holland. I'm with the Community Alliance of Tenants here on behalf of Anti-Displacement PDX. Uh, we are here to see, um, support the, um, the over two dozen recommendations that were included in the comprehensive plan through the um, uh, uh, Portland's Planning and Sustainability Commission. My understanding is that um, potentially the Chapter 5 Housing Policy 5.53 is in debate about whether or not it should be included, which uh, talks about renter protections, protecting renters from displacement, which as we know is one of the biggest issues affecting the city of Portland at this time. Um, we do want to make a recommendation that city council um, support it the way that it was written and not make any changes to it because we do think that it is going to be one of the most effective um, uh, mitigation strategies for uh, gentrification in the city of Portland. Um, given that Portland has 
has been and is on the wrong path toward gentrification and displacement, exclusion, and segregation. Um, we know that people have been and are continuing to be evicted and pushed out of their homes, and it's already torn communities apart, and we're at uh, a critical moment in which Portland needs to decide whether or not we're going to continue down that path or if we're going to change that, and we believe that the comprehensive plan is one of the methods for doing so. So, thank you. My name is Ben Earl, and I live at 5524 Northeast 30th, which is the just north of the uh, destination restaurant corner uh, with Beast and Yakuza, and probably familiar with that corner. Um, I'm coming to represent myself as a property owner. Also, I'm on the land use committee for the Concordia Neighborhood Association. And I come, and we come, with many thumbs up in support of the part of the comprehensive plan, misuse zones, that has determined that this intersection should be zoned CM1, which is 35 feet, three stories. And this CM1 zoning uh, designation was created specifically for smaller mixed use nodes within lower density residential areas. And that's exactly what this is. The problem that we have, and I'm making a very um, specific request of the city uh, council tonight, um, in the spirit of the many thumbs up for this appropriate zoning, CM1, we would like to request that the city council approve a down zone now of this intersection from the current commercial CS four story, 45 feet, to the CM1 designation. The reason for this is because uh, there is proposed development that will be occurring uh, with the sale that's gonna be closing in middle of January. That will be four stories, 45 feet, that will introduce one and two bedroom apartments, 30 units, um, that will change the whole dynamic of this corner. It will take 25% of the corner and set a precedent for the rest of the corners to go as well before the comprehensive plan gets approved. Um, therefore, we have a problem with density of parking, traffic, height, character, encroachment on solar panels, like my house, and we are very concerned about this. We have a process that we are gonna be following over the course of the next two months with the Concordia Neighborhood Association to have a public meeting to involve all the stakeholders, and I will be returning on January 7th for the next hearing with additional materials uh, supporting where we're at, and hopefully we'll have both Concordia Neighborhood Association and NCN behind us when we return in February or March to press this case further. Thank you very much. The next four, 41, 42, 44, and 45, Joseph Corey, Tanny Kim, Matt Thomas, and Claudia Koff, and they'll be followed by 46, 47, 48, and 49. Anna Litton King, Litton Nico, I believe it is, Steve Efros, and Jim Labby, and Keith, Keith and Julie Haberman. Good evening, my name is Lori Stakeman. Thank you for this opportunity to testify on behalf of Mo Farhood of Stark First Management and his request to uh, change the zoning from R2 to R1 for his properties on 139th through 162nd. As a community activist, I play many roles in East County as a Gresham City Councilor, a Gresham Redevelopment Commissioner, and a homeless advocate. But today I am here in my capacity as a professional farmer's insurance agent. I want to offer you some insight about Stark Furs Management and their excellent business practices. I have witnessed firsthand Mr. Farhood's commitment to this community. He rents to many folks that have difficulty finding housing elsewhere and is an excellent example of how all property managers should operate. He has immense pride of ownership for all of his properties. He invests substantially in them to ensure the safety of his residents while providing high quality, attractive places for people to call home. He cares deeply about the people that live in this community and is always looking for ways to serve. From his early involvement on the Rosewood Initiative to his support of many events like Rock the Block. In my opinion, one of the biggest issues we have facing homelessness is the lack of quality, affordable units. It is a supply and demand issue. By approving this request, the City of Portland will help alleviate the pressure of rising rents by supplying more units. As a Gresham Redevelopment Commissioner and a member of the Powell Division Transit Steering Committee, I am committed to finding ways to prevent involuntary displacement. I hope you agree with me that by approving this request, you will be ensuring a supply of quality, safe, and affordable housing for East County residents. Thank you. 
Good evening, City Council. I'm learning English. My name is Tong Kim from Myanmar. I used to live at Northeast 78 Avenue and Gillison. I lived three years and I, en I enjoy to live there. On Ju July 9, 2015, I got noted to rent increase from $600 to $1,295. And the water and sewer from zero to sixty-five dollar. Which two months notice my rent increased from six hundred dollar to thirteen hundred sixty. I looked for two months and unable to find an apartment I could afford because of this I had to pay two more months at the higher rates. This caused me great hardship because of I'm a student and I cannot work full time. I support the 11 and this Rayman plan. Good evening, my name is Matt Thomas. I own Townsend's Tea Company and Brew Doctor Kombucha. Uh, this is a Portland grown uh, family of businesses that I started in 2006 uh, on my own uh, with a tea house on Northeast Alberta Street. In 2008, I started uh, making a popular drink uh, called Brew Doctor Kombucha. We're now distributed uh, in Canada and 25 states across the country, all produced in-house right here in Portland, Oregon. And we do this uh, in the Brooklyn neighborhood in a building that sat empty for years before we moved into it. Um, it was a uh, commercial laundry and they had had a fire and it sat empty for I think a, a decade before we moved in and started renovating it. We've put a lot of money into it and we have grown and now we employ 57 Portlanders with quality jobs and health care. And um, we were happy to see the paid sick, leave, paid sick leave go through for our tea house employees and for my production staff. Um, the landlord owns the two properties that I occupy um, where we manufacture the beverage and then there are two adjacent properties that he owns as well. All four properties were originally zoned commercial before uh, 1980 when they were changed in the 1980 comprehensive plan to residential. And in 2007, the council changed the zoning of the two parcels I am currently occupying back to general commercial at the request of the landlord. However, the other two still remain residential. We could really use those two properties for additional office space. We're having to, we're growing, which is great, but people are working from their laps on, uh, on the couch in the office and in the kitchen. Um, in order to help our business grow, we request that, um, that these two units, um, 4214 Southeast 12th and 1208 Southeast Boise Street be changed to the mixed use neighborhood designation. Could you just say those again, that those addresses are a little slower? Sure. Um, and uh, uh, 1208 Southeast Boise and 4214 Southeast 12th Avenue. Um, in support of the request, I'd like to submit two documents into the record, which are copies of letters my landlord previously sent to the Planning and Sustainability Commission, which show a map of the all four properties. And thanks for consideration of the matter. We just like to continue to grow jobs right around our, our property rather than have to lease multiple, multiple buildings. Thank you. Congratulations on the success of your business. Thanks. Hello, uh, my name is Claudia and I live in the Gateway area, which is off 105th and Northeast Davis. And as of uh, October 9th, I received a no clause eviction notice. I've lived at this house for 12 years and with uh, my children, uh, my daughter and son, and my son is with me still, at least 23 unemployed. So the no clause eviction notice has put us up to homelessness. I'm also an SSI disability. Um, I, my, with my son having no income, we are displaced. So um, I've been a great attendant, uh, renter. I've paid my bills on time, and their request is to have the house back because of a family member. The Gateway area is very desired area, and with the price of rent going up, it's a sub supply and demand. So. I have no place to go, basically. Um, so I feel that this non-eviction notice and uh, to end displacement in Portland, because I see homelessness very much here, 
I thank to Kat for uh, su supporting me because I found this, uh, there was a notice that took a, a law that took effect on November 15th, 90 days uh, eviction or 90 days of rent increase. So th thanks to them, I was able to um, make a note and have extended time to help, to help find a home. Uh, again, I thank Kat for the help and the guidance uh, of my rights on housing because I didn't know of this and the rent increase in Portland is not, is outrageous <laughs> and for the supply and demand is to put many people of family seniors singles plus even my furries my companions at homelessness so I would thank you and to please just say yes thank you very much so we, we certainly get the picture and we know th uh, that this sense of displacement uh, language is very important. So um, we have an hour left and a, a twin, how many more folks do we have to testify, Carla? Uh, at probably about 22 maybe. 22, 22 so I would encourage you that if you're here on the same issue to just uh, say that so that we can make sure we get uh, all of the different issues on the table. Thank you very much, and thanks especially to the Community Alliance of Talents for your organization and supporting the policies at the Planning Commission, which is once you got it into the Planning Commission recommendation, that's a lot of the way there. Next four are Anna Lit Litvinico, Steve Efros, Jim Labby, and I have uh, Keith, Keith Haber Habermall, and you, okay. Sorry. You signed up on the same line, sorry. Planning? Yeah. Well, just to go ahead and do the translation and then we'll have the next person. There's one uh, extra go ahead. chair. Okay. Um, so good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Anna Welcome, and here, I'm here to interpret. And um, just for introduction, I wanted to, to let you know that we're here to tell you one more story about East Portland displacement and uh, rental issues. Добрый вечер всем присутствующим. Меня зовут Анна, я с восточной стороны Портленда. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Anna, and I live in East Portland. Три года назад мы поселились в двухкомнатной квартире, и наш рент был 760 долларов в месяц. Um, three years ago, uh, we uh, rented a two-bedroom apartment in East Portland, and our rent was uh, $760 per month. После этого наш рент подняли до $785 долларов в месяц. Then, rent, uh, then uh, our rent was increased to $785, and uh, uh, our rent is also very bad quality. У нас семья из шести человек а, с четырьмя детьми. А, в октябре 2015 года нас выселили. Uh, our family consists of uh, six people, two adults and four children. And in October of 2015, we got evicted for no reason. А, за пять месяцев до выселения мы уже искали себе жилье, но не могли найти ничего доступное. Um, so before this eviction happened, we actually um, were looking for uh, affordable housing uh, and also uh, for the housing with more rooms because we have four kids, boys and girls, and we couldn't find anything. Мы были вынуждены выехать, и так как нам некуда было идти, мы поселились в доме моей сестры. We didn't have a place uh, to go to after the eviction, um, and my sister let us stay in her house until we find something else. Uh, сестры имеет только uh, square feet. Нас шестеро человек, и у моей сестры также шестеро человек в семье. Uh, my sister's house uh, has only one, uh, 1,100 square feet, two bedrooms, and uh, so our family consists of six uh, people, and her family consists of six people, so ba basically uh, there are 12 people living in this little house right now. 
А на данный момент мы также не можем найти ничего доступного. Мы продолжаем жить в маленьком доме, где проживают 12 человек. And as of today, we're still uh, looking and can't find anything. Uh, we applied everywhere, and we put our names on each and every single waiting list, uh, but no success yet. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. My name is Steve Efros. I live with my family in the 60th Avenue Station area of the Rose City Park neighborhood, and I'm here to discuss this area relative to the comprehensive plan update. The Rose City Park Neighborhood Association brought to our attention the potential for properties in the 60th Avenue Station area district to be rezoned to significantly increase residential density from largely single-family residences to medium and high-density multifamily housing. While we support the overall density goals of the comprehensive plan update, we are concerned that the current plan too simplistically applies a circular area of increased density onto this historic gridded section of our neighborhood. We would ask that there be a public land use review process to consider all of the impacts of higher density to the 60th Avenue Station area. This portion of the Rose City Park neighborhood, while it has a lot of people filtering through it to use Max, bicycle to work, drive across or downtown, and access the industrial warehouse properties along the freeway, its infrastructure is currently severely underdesigned and underbuilt, with narrow sidewalks, little to no landscape buffers, along its busy streets and a disproportionate amount of unpaved roads. Any increases in residential density to the 60th Avenue Station area should include a careful, considered process to provide safe and adequate pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicular access to and through 60th Avenue. Thank you for your consideration. My name is Julie Haberman, and my husband, Keith, and I have two homes, um, 4131 Southeast 136th and 13428 Southeast Gladstone Street. These two properties touch, and they are ready for growth. This is a neighborhood that can handle the growth for single-family homes. We request that you do not rezone them. We need density and affordable housing, so why would the zoning change from R2 to R5? opposite of the goal. This will take away future affordable housing. This area has great community and can handle this growth of more family homes. It is, if it is to stop multifamily housing, why is there not a single family zone in the middle between R2 and 5? <clears throat> we have lived here for 25 years and observed homes on smaller lots are better taken care of. Some of the lots that are on the R5 are not being taken care of. So possibly a larger lot is not helping. It's not being utilized for the property because it's just wasted land where we could put more houses closer together to get more affordable housing. The raw homes and the houses on the smaller lots in our neighborhood are working and they're being taken care of and there are families living in there and they are going to the great school. We've got a great new city park that the city put in there in the Gilbert Heights neighborhood. It's a great community. We have bus, bus zones, we have bike paths, we have everything. So if there is a reason for the down zoning, would you be okay with the R2.5 zone, which is like row houses? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's going all the way I, to R5 I, I that's concerning to you. I don't to do apartments. I tend to do family homes. Okay, it, but it's, it's a going all the way. It's a family neighborhood, and we want to help the community keep that way. And going all the way to R5 is too far in your opinion. It, it, Got it. it we lose too many houses. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good evening, Madam President, Commissioner Novick, and 
Commissioner Salzman, my name is Jim Labby. I'm Urban Conservation with, with Audubon Society of Portland. I staff our office at the Leach Botanical, Leach Botanical Garden. And last year I've served on the Title XI uh, Oversight Committee. Um, I'm here tonight to echo our uh, Audubon's uh, earlier testimony regarding industrial land supply, uh, brownfield decontamination decam and reclamation. Uh, and removal of West Hayden Island from the uh, industrial lands inventory. But I'm here specifically to talk, uh, to express support for uh, the policies in the comprehensive plan relating uh, to urban forestry, generally in, in, in Chapter 7 for environment and watersheds, specific, specifically around urban forestry, policies 7.11 for the urban forests, um, and even more specifically for the first policy, the which which is around preservation of uh, encouraging and requiring the preservation of, of large healthy trees, native trees, vegetation, tree groves, and forested areas. I don't have time to go into all the reasons trees are important to the urban environment, to Portlanders in particular, but I'll, I'll simply note that, that uh, trees are the way all Portlanders connect with nature on a daily basis. And to the extent that there is anxiety about growth and development in the city, I think uh, the attention to trees is really critical to achieving the compact, walkable uh, neighborhoods with nature nearby that, that Portlanders value and deserve. So um, I think trees are really important to, to addressing a lot, some of the larger growth concerns that Portlanders have. Um, there are three areas that, uh, that I think deserve focus in prioritizing these strategies, preserving uh, large healthy trees, reforming Title 11, to do, uh, addressing exemptions, removing exemptions for commercial industrial land, and I think a, a look at the policies and practices around preserving large healthy trees in the public right of way, ensuring that we can grow large healthy trees in the public right of way are going to be critical going forward. Thank you. Was Keith Hepperman going to speak? Your husband Keith, was he going to speak? He wasn't going to speak. Okay, thank you. So uh, we. Same, same thank you. We'll go with 51, 52, 53, and 55. Jim Carlock, Peter Marr, Barbara Kerr, and Somnath Subedi. And they will be followed by 56, 57, 58, and 59. Arlene Kamura, Lori Sig Sigmund. Katherine Anderson and Eve Portland. Welcome, Mr. Carlock. Remember to push the button. Let me read you what the chairman of the White House Council of Economic Advisors said. Restricted supply leads to higher prices and less affordability. We see the association in the relationship between land use regulations and affordability in several dozen U.S. metro areas. This is exactly what is happening in Portland. You have restricted the supply of land while demand is rising and the price is skyrocketing. Your decision to build up instead of out has doubled people's rent or mortgage payments. You are destroying Portland's livability, destroying Portland's economy, discriminating against low-income people. Have you heard, that? as you have heard from numerous low-income people tonight, and driving out minorities, who have you heard from numerous minorities tonight? When are you going to actually fix this problem? And there's only one fix, and that is more buildable land. The comp plan has a number of feel-good fixes, many of which have proven failure and time after time across the country, yet you're going to try them again to pretend that you're actually doing something. Um, also, I'd like to remind you that in November 2014, there was a density measure on the ballot, and the people of 75 percent of the people of Portland voted no more density. Why does this plan increase density in the view of 75 percent of the people don't want any more? Um, have you ever looked at actual transit data, transit system data? Did you know that transit uses more energy, costs more, and is slower than driving a car? Why do you promote wasting our time, wasting money, and increasing CO2 by promoting transit? What's it even doing in the comp plan except 
as a means of moving people into downtown Portland, because that's the only thing transit is effective at doing, and I suggest instead of taxing the region for a billion dollars, you stick the bill on the downtown Portland landowners. Thank you. Oh, then there's more at debunkingportland.com. Sam. Uh, I'm Sam Subedi, a private citizen and UN refugee uh, delegate for Oregon, and testifying on behalf of immigrants and refugees in Portland. One in five Portlanders are foreign born. Half of Portland public school kids go home to non-white households. This is the reality of our community. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, by 2042, Seven years after the target date of 2035 comprehensive plan, the minority who are people of color, immigrants and refugees will be the minor majority. When Portlanders come together, no one can divide our core values, generosity and beliefs. We fight back bigotry as one Portlander. My request to you is, can you please add mandatory inclusion and uh, engagement of refugees, immigrants and people of color into the 2035 Comprehensive plan, Portland Plan through decision-making process, programs, and activities. Just adding the word equity and inclusiveness doesn't go far enough. Portland Dream is for all. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Portland City Council. My name is Peter Marr, and I'm a homeowner at 1417 Southeast Clinton Street. The owner of the property on the southwest corner of the 15th and Clinton Street intersection is asking the city council specifically to grant him a zoning change from residential to commercial. This property is in an area initially floated by the 2035 comp plan to change from residential to, to commercial in the 2014-2015 period, and neighbors um, uh, had feedback and input, and after receiving considerable neighborhood feedback against this commercial zoning change uh, in this area in general, which includes the property on Southeast 15th and Clinton, uh, they decided to keep it residential. So currently in the draft plan, it's zoned residential. However, the property owner is still requesting that the Portland City Council carve out a zone change in this area for his property only from residential to commercial. The neighborhood is opposed to rezoning this property. We enjoy a residential neighborhood with numerous commercial businesses within easy walking and biking distances. There is an elementary school nearby and we want more families with small kids to move in and walk their kids to school. We want to maintain a quiet, safe residential feel to the neighborhood. Commercial businesses on this property will increase noise, parking problems, and other potential disruptions. We talked with our neighbors and got over 50 signatures opposed to the zoning uh, change. And HAND, our neighborhood association, declined to write a letter in support of the zone change as well. Therefore, we asked Portland City Council to maintain the zoning of the property at 1727 Southeast 15th Avenue as residential as it currently stands in the 2035 comp plan. Would you like the signatures for the, thank you. Thank you, please go ahead. My name is Barbara Kerr, good evening. I am a resident and board member for East Columbia Neighborhood Association. Uh, East Columbia opposes the use of uh, golf course open space parcel zoning designation to be made industrial. Columbia Edgewater, um, golf course has retained its open space designation. Colwood Golf Course negotiated retention of part of its open space designation. However, Riverside Golf Course and Broadmoor um, are still in question. Our ECNA East Columbia Natural Resource Management Plan approved by the City Council in 1991 calls for preserving corridors for movement of wildlife <coughs> excuse me, for their survival, including room to move to different food sources, room to nest and multiply, and room to diversify the gene pool. As much as I like to see the four-point buck who walks down a street, it breaks my heart that he and his family would need to migrate via a busy street rather than open space. 
We therefore oppose the proposal to convert open space land currently used as golf courses to any industrial zoning um, comp plan designation. There should be no net loss of open space land and all natural habitat areas should be preserved or expanded. Thank you. The next four are Arlene Kimura, Lori Stegman, Katherine Anderson, and Eve Portland, 56, 57, 58, and 59. And they will be followed by 61, 62, 63, and 64, Bill Leidenkugel, Isa Linan, Jake Antlis, and Maria Talavera. Welcome, please get started, Ms. Kimura. Good evening, my name is Arlene Kimura, and I live in East Portland. Um, I actually want to tell you that I thought the comp plan is a massively complicated undertaking. And it was more complicated by the fact that the map app didn't work until it was a third time around. I'm actually complaining about the process, that, that we had to go through all of that to get the map app to work. And the other issue, for the, the many of us who do not spend a lot of time uh, looking at the fine print in zoning codes, is the zoning changes come concurrent with the comp plan changes and it causes great confusion for most of our people. And the other thing I would ask is if you are truly committed to equity, just printing stuff and hoping that they get handed out to people who don't speak English is not enough. Truly meaningful engagement needs to happen one on one. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. My name's Katherine Anderson. Um, first, I will make a disclaimer. I am with the Blue Group, the area between 26th and 30th, between Belmont and Stark. Two of my uh, neighbors, uh, um, Lori Kopek and Brian Richardson, have talked about that particular area. I, too, oppose the upzoning. I have some different things that I want to say. Okay, first of all, this is kind of unique for me. I want to talk about my property. Um, my property has a little dotted line through part of it, which means this much of it is zoned one thing, and this little tiny um, 10 foot by 50 section is zoned differently, and that's causing me grief. Um, maybe it, I never noticed it before, but um, I did try looking early on and using that map app told me there was nothing happening when, in fact, there is there are things. I'm, my property is being changed um, in the zone designation. Um, I oppose it for a number of reasons, all the things that were stated. But additionally, there is a property across the street on Belmont. It used to be Harry's mother's. It's on the southeast corner of 28th and Belmont. Beautiful, lovely, old 100 by 100 lot, nice old house um, owned by Janice. Um, that was sold a couple years ago. Um, it was divided into four lots. Each, each, um, each home has a uh, driveway um, and a garage, underground garage flooded. Um, additionally, um, each one of those properties, or at least a couple of them, sold for more than the entire property did, which raises all the values in the neighborhood. I've seen changing demographics in my neighborhood. We are, and always have, have been, just people, just residential people, working people living in a lovely neighborhood. There's also problems with traffic in my neighborhood. 28th goes all the way, signalized intersections from Broadway to Stark Street. People continue across this street, across Belmont. Um, I've heard five accidents this year and I've witnessed three. It's not, it's not a good safe intersection and I think that increasing the density will only increase um, the number of accidents. Finally, and I'm getting around to public safety, and I'll say it quickly. If you could, if you could just give us the address of your property. I'm sorry, 808 Southeast 28th. 808. The other lot to the south does not have an address. Thanks, Apologies. and if you could submit the rest in writing, that'd be great. I would Thank be you. happy to. Hi, my name is Eve Portland. Mom, I want to come home. Thank you. The next four are 61, 62, 63, and 64. Bill Lindenkugel, Isa Lenon, 
Jake Antlis and Maria Talavera. And they will be followed by 65, 66, 67, and 68, Bach Gurung, Joe Courtright, Atafar, and PK Mar, or Ma, sorry. Thanks for taking the input. My name's Isha Lino, resident of Northeast Portland Collie neighborhood. Um, I wanna speak out in support of the anti-displacement um, proposal as written, and also Eli Spivak's proposal for more multi-residential zoning. The main meat of my testimony is around the comprehensive plan not addressing uh, any measures for tiny houses on wheels, which are custom houses built on metal trailers and classified as RVs. And what I wanna propose is a potential um, solution for infill. There is uh, opportunity in the Culley neighborhood to do a design overlay, to do an experiment to see how it would be received. The lots are large and the culture and residents are receptive for the most part. Um, this would allow people like me to bring aging relatives into the neighborhood at an affordable uh, solution. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jake Antles, and I live with Isha, full disclosure. Um, and uh, I'm also an advocate for alternative housing types, just en enable the people to live how they would like to live. Also advocate for the uh, anti-displacement measures in the proposed draft. Um, it, I'm really proud of the city for having developed those aspects. And um, uh, my, my one story I'd like to contribute to the discussion would be that I have this lovely friend, she's currently living in Virginia, and she would like to come to Portland, and she would bring a lot to the culture here, except she's worried she would displace somebody. And I, I hate for her to have that feeling, because she wants to join us in our ende collective endeavor here. And I would like there to be a, consist like a way to tell her, you can come here, we have ways to protect the residents from being displaced. Um, furthermore, given climate change and the potential for displacing millions of people around this planet, what is the opportunity that we have in the Willamette Valley, Valley and Portland in general to not only just not displace our own residents, but to help with displacement of others in the world? Um, thank you. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es María Talavera y yo vengo a contar mi historia y ella me va a interpretar. So to make the process go by faster, I'll just read off her story. Uh, hello, good afternoon, my name is Maria Talavera. I live in Southeast Portland and I come to share my story because I'm worried of having to move again. You see, the thing is, I've already been having to move a lot of times because they've raised my rent and because of this, I've been having to look for something I can afford at last minute. And well, this time it's the same thing. Just recently I received a letter saying they will raise my rent $100 more by January. And if I wasn't pleased with this option, they gave me the option to leave at any time I wanted. And I know that $100 may not seem so much to you guys, but for low income families like us, it is a lot of money. And I would honestly like you guys to help us so the same thing doesn't keep happening and happening again. Because if this keeps happening, probably later on, not only people but families will be without a home because they can no longer afford their current homes. So again, I ask for you guys to help us because they're raising up the rent and to end displacement. Thank you. The next four are 65, 66, 67, and 68. Bak Gurlang, Joe Courtright, Atafar, and PK Mar. Welcome. Let's push the button, please. Mingalaba. Mingalaba, I am a Burmese interpreter. Mingalaba. My name is Atafa Marip. Tomorrow, I will be able to get a little bit of a little bit of First of all, I would like to be thanks to give this kind of opportunity. Thank you so much. Because 
Because we are came as a refugee, we have a lot of difficulties. But I will go for the short to the point because I know time is very limited. I live at the 16400 Northeast Burnside. Uh, I live in 2014. On that time, I gave a deposit money $700. On that time, I gave a deposit $700. After I decided to move from that apartment, they not give me a full of the deposit. They give only $150. Because I have a health issue in that apartment, and also, I am trying to work as much as I can. I, I have to be earned as much as I can. Because of that apartment, my health issue is worse and worse. Right now, I cannot work. Right now, I have to be a stay at home for a six months ago. Thank you so much uh, for giving me this kind of opportunity. I would like to be explain you because of the the apartment it's not good. Because of that, I have a health issue it came up. So uh, I want to share with you, please look at the kind of the apartments for the health issue and then more issue. And then thank you again, and then God bless you all. Thank you very much. Which, which country did you come from? I came from Burma, Myanmar. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm very glad you're here, and we will look into the issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is P.K. Ma. Uh, because of or I'm here is my rent is increased. Rent is increased up to $175 for each month. And also, I would like to uh, share with you another my story. I have a letter from the home forwarding. I apply the housing for the subsidized housing. And then I received the letter uh, for the application, and then I finished with the, all the application for the background check, everything I did. And then I sent it to the home forwarding to the complete application. But I did not get back anything from them. It's for a year ago. I don't have anything. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Go right ahead, please. Namate Nirunam Bakta Guru. Good evening, my name is Bhakta Guru. I'm Dhanmika Bhutan. I was born in Bhutan. 
Nepal, I uh, I lived in Nepal uh, as a refugee from Bhutan. Yes. Miss America. I was uh, I lived as a refugee, was settled in, in Nepal for twenty years, and then I got resettled here in the US. Uh, well, living as a refugee in Nepal, I suffered uh, different uh, calamities like flooding, fire, and epidemics, all different kinds. I, I, Arrived here in 2011. Uh, I live here in like uh, 12900 Southeast Division. The, uh, the area I live uh, is not very nice. The housing condition is not very good. And besides, the house rent has been frequently hiked up or increased. Because as I'm uh, uh, partially disabled and I have kids, uh, I received some like benefit from the government, but the benefit is not enough, and uh, I am under a lot of stress uh, trying to uh, manage my household, and that is the main reason I'm here to uh, appeal my case. I speak about. I am tired and I am Both me and my wife uh, are uh, uh, have a speech problem, and we have two, two kids, and we are always short of uh, money, as most other refugees' uh, families are here in Portland. Okay. My main request is as uh, despite we both uh, receive uh, benefits from the government, with increasing rent uh, and having to take care of my children. Uh, we are always in short of money, and my main request is that uh, the government or the city uh, would consider providing uh, uh, subsidized housing for people like us, and that is my main request. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. The next four are 69, 70, 71, and 72, Ma Na, James Smith, Ganga Kanal, and Rudy Kadlub. And they'll be followed by 73, 74, 75, and 76. Uh, Paul on Northeast 63rd, Angus Duncan, Tom Karwaki, Christ and Christine Palacios. How many more do we have after that, Carla, please? Uh, after those four, I show, or the one names I've called, I show uh, four more. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. My name is James Smith. I'm a Mount Tabor resident and Neighborhood Association board member. I'm here to offer additional testimony in regards to the Mount, uh, excuse me, the Portland Nursery site. Uh, in the world of zoning maps, the Portland Nursery site is one of the oddities that makes Portland weird and that we all love so much. They're a commercial endeavor, largely on residential property, and surrounded completely by residential property. And for those of us in the Neighborhood Association and the neighbors at large, we 
as you've heard, really love that business and are happy to have them be so successful. And they're um, probably one of the things that our neighborhood is best known for. And we're really eager to see that business flourish and um, carry forward into the future. I think the concern that we have is their request for an all commercial zone on that very large site. Um, our love for the nursery extends to the nursery and that business exclusively. And should that future property change owners and direction, um, the commercial opportunities on a site that large in such a residential single family neighborhood zone would be potentially catastrophic. So while we are very staunch supporters of the nursery, we, we cannot embrace their request for an all commercial zoning on the property. Uh, we do very much appreciate and support the position taken by the Planning Bureau and their um, proposal for the mixed use zone. They've generously expanded the commercial zone for their property to extend all the way back and encompass their current buildings. We see that as a very big gift where they had a much shallower commercial zone to begin with. It's now being proposed to be significantly deeper. We think that there's been ample opportunity to help them along and we think the conditional use is a, a fantastic result. So we, in, um, we support that very vigorously. Thank you. My name is Mange. Thank you for inviting me. I want to share with you is uh, my rent is increased. And the one thing I would like to let you know is uh, our same apartment, but some of the room are increase more than the other. Please consider about the same apartment, but the, the rent increase is not the same. So what can I do for that? Can you please consider about our ask refugee? Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar. Good evening. My name is Gangadatta Khanal. 2012 Salma Mo America Ma I arrived here in 2012. Uh, 2013 Salko July Mo Ina Ko Bara Tarikh Mo 112 Avenue Number 18 Mo Boso Baso I, since like uh, 2012, July, July, uh, July 12, I've been living uh, uh, in this apartment at 112th Avenue on near Division. Uh, the rent was uh, $800 when I first moved there. Which has gone up to like 895. Uh, I and my wife are both uh, has uh, like uh, disabilities. Uh, we are both on benefit. Uh, one of the main expenses uh, that goes is the uh, the cost towards the uh, electricity, that's about like $300. And uh, the manager This seems to be uh, significantly higher than uh, what most uh, other people are paying. And I uh, brought this to the manager many times. Uh, but he keeps keep saying this is an old, old house, and then he hasn't been able to uh, look into the matter seriously. And this could not be just uh, a single uh, case, but uh, there are also like eight other Nepali families live in this uh, house, and also like maybe 25 other immigrant families. And most seems to uh, go through this, uh, suffer through this problem. And 
यदि सरकारी घर हो बने ठीक है जब व्यक्ति को तो निजा घर हो बने हमें महीना को भाड़ा तीर रह बस है ऐसा तो रखूं नहीं समान बिगड़ी ना हमें ले फिर पैसे तीर नो बस क्या इतने घर हमें बोल कर कोई समान लाना पाऊं तो बोली को दिन बिसाइड्स लाइक व्हेन व्हेन एवर लाइक द हाउस इज इन वेरी द कंडीशन uh, you know, like uh, take care of these. So uh, uh, maybe some kind of inspection uh, to check the standard of the living uh, would be would be good. Or that's what I would request. Yo, okay, sir. Sarkari ghar open. I am. Bona mana ma soya ghar thun. Sarkar le soya ghar thun. Amro unna thun sir. Yadi bhakti ko ghar open. I am. Moina ko bharat tere ka pachi. हमें लाइफ असुविधा भागो ये रूप बनाई दिनों पड़ता है हमरो यहाँ दोहिला बाता छेल बाता सब तेरा बड़ा चीजो पस्ता हमरो घर को चीजो ये रूप तेज़ को समस्या हमें लाइफ कोस्टों से आड़ों सा हीटर न लगो उन्हें ज़्यादा ले बसी न सकन उनसा ना नहीं ये रूप तो हीटर लगो उन्हें बिल हमें लेते हैं come up with some kind of support or but uh, I mean like this is a private it seems to be a private uh, uh, apartment and as we pay the rent and it should be uh, the duty or the responsibility of the landlord to uh, come up with all the uh, proper uh, repair now where I live the uh, the windows are broken and there is like cold draft coming and we have to keep the heater all the time on and it thank you very much appreciate you coming in eti kura maile sarkar lai janaude aaja lai eti me binti bisaya ma bidha mangna chahandai chu this is my request to the government here ya hone mata pita dajo bhai ra ya hone sarkari karmachari sabai jana le mero ekai tarfa bata namaskar cha and i humbly present my respect to all of you here tara yo kura feri manager le cha tai le gara wa pol lagai cha bhanera bholi ko din ma thank you very much we really need to get to the next next testify thank you i hope i would not have to go through any uh actions because i brought this to from my here through my because or no th th yeah. this isn't actually <laughs> the, this is about the comprehensive plan i appreciate you bringing your concerns to us but we're not going to be um we won't get into any trouble because we're not actually the people who do that yeah we might not this is so much that keep okay. rudy uh did i miss rudy cad cad lub is he here okay. then we'll go with uh paul on northeast 63rd number 73 uh, Angus Duncan, 74, Tom Karwaki, 75, and Christine Palacios, 76. And they'll be followed by Peter Stackel Sherrod, Alan Johnson, Va uh, Ray Vang, and Wong Mong. And that's it, 77, 78, 79, and 80 were the last ones to sign up. Thank you for your patience. Would you like to get started? Hi, thank you for having me here. My name is Christina Palacios. I'm the community organizer with the Community Alliance of Tenants. First of all, I wanna thank you for your courage of uh, passing protections in the city of Portland. Um, I've been able to tell so the good Christina, news. Christina, I'm gonna need to, you to keep on the comprehensive plan. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna get there. Thank you for the reminder. So I'm here to ask you to um, have the same courage to say yes to the recommendations on the comprehensive plan, especially the housing part. We've been getting a lot of people that are being displaced and are able to find housing. Um, today I took uh, 19 Spanish calls, nine, uh, nine of them were eviction. And um, a few minutes ago, I got a notice from a building that I've been working in in Portland where five um, African Americans got evictions after we've been working with many, about 30 community organizations, trying to find resources, find a way to help those tenants that got an eviction notice in October. And we've been, uh, with the help of the lawyers, their notice got extended, but they can no longer do that. So, so I'm gonna need you to stick to the comprehensive plan. Yeah, so I, the anti-displacement measurements on the comprehensive plan are gonna address those situations and protect renters from being displaced from their community. 
community. So thank you very much for having me. I'm in the Cooley District, and it's um, the overlay industrial and how it will impact our neighborhood. We're a small- Just give us your name and the address that you're concerned about, please. I'm reading in for Paula English. I'm Samantha Dinwiddie. And we are a small community in uh, the Coley area off of 63rd and Columbia. And we're surrounded by the uh, wildlife. And we're concerned about the new, the industrial overlay that's being proposed, a 20 year plan, and how it'll affect us and our land use and value. And I have some signatures that support um, the neighborhood that I'd like to turn in and uh, some other information. Thank you so much Thank for bringing you. that to our attention. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Angus Duncan. Um, I reside at 2373 Northwest Johnson Street in Portland. I chair the Global Warming Commission of the State of Oregon, and I am here to testify for the record how important a well-crafted Portland City comprehensive plan is to the state realizing its greenhouse gas reduction goals. Um, so little known, little known factoid, if New York City were the 51st state um, in the country, it would also be by far the most energy and carbon efficient state in the country, not because of a sudden blossoming of zero emissions homes in New York City, um, or not the, because they've fixed the leaks in their steam tunnels, because they haven't, uh, but because of density, because um, people live and work in common wall dwellings and that in dense enough neighborhoods that they could support uh, transit, which is more carbon and energy efficient. Now, presumably none of us want to live in New York City or we would have moved there. We live in Portland and, and uh, so, so the lessons learned are not precise, but they are useful lessons to be learned. Um, most particularly that leveraging Portland's density potential, especially in transit corridors, is critical to the state realizing its greenhouse gas goals. We have actually had fairly respectable success in the city and in the state, and statewide we are actually down to uh, almost our former 1990 levels of greenhouse gas emissions. But looking forward, all of the projections say we are headed sideways. And sideways is better than up, but it is not success. Sideways is failure. Um, so it is important that Oregon double down on its overall emissions programs and that Portland leverage its urban design advantages, uh, including added densities where they can be sensitively and sensibly deployed to achieve carbon reductions in building stock um, and in transportation. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Tom Karwaki, 7139 North McCrum. I'm the vice chair of the University Park Neighborhood Association and the land use chair. The EPNA board has requested that five uh, properties that were commercially zoned in 1980 and that uh, as the neighborhood uh, commercial be uh, turned into residential. Uh, they are residences there. Uh, 6822, 6832, 6838, 6846, 6858, North uh, Willamette. These are on the southern side of Willamette, uh, right next to a, um, a bridge that the city does not own. It's a private bridge, and it's a very dangerous curve, and it would be uh, hooved the, for public safety to make that uh, just uh, residential R5 instead of uh, commercial. Uh, there's no commercial in that area that would uh, be affected by it. Um, the EPNA is, uh, we're gonna be working with our, we're working with the property owners and we'll have something to you soon with all the property owners' uh, signature on that fact too. EPNA uh, also supports TSP project 30059, which is ODOT, fixing uh, North Lombard, and 30090, with the North Greenway uh, uh, from Cathedral 
Cathedral Park to Swan Island. Both of these we supported. And we also affirmed the uh, statements that were made earlier about the map app not working in the first two iterations. This was a serious problem, uh, that there was no second languages. Uh, uh, it was very difficult for people who had Spanish doing that. And also that the BPS staff uh, and, uh, and PSC were not responsive to uh, citizen neighborhood concerns. Almost none of North Portland's comments were considered. The last four I show signed up are Peter Stotchelrod, Alan Johnson, Ray Vang, and Moang Moang. Welcome, you're the cleanup crew. Yeah. Batting in the ninth inning. Just push the light and give us your name and get started. Thank you. Uh, my name is Peter Stalkerode. I live at 6921 Northeast 63rd, Portland. Um, I'm here about the comprehensive plan, 6-39. Under 6-39C, I'm happy to see that this plan wants to protect the environment. But under 33.475.008 of the employment plan, it allows for mitigation. So five trees in Clatsop County and the EZ zone that we have fought for and paid for is done. What the neighbors are afraid of is to have a 47th street from Columbia to Cornfoot and Buffalo from 47th East with its high crime rate, junk and garbage. I mean, these guys are parked in the EZ zone or what should be the EZ zone. It's right up to the water's edge. And we have quite a bit of wildlife down there. Quality of life, property values, we feel are gonna nosedive. This is a unique neighborhood and a special place along the slough with second generation farmers and startup farmers begging to use the large lots. This is food security, nine miles from city center. We cloister huge amounts of carbon in this neighborhood by farming. Um, and I, I just don't see how this zone is going to um, this little area is going to affect anything in the bigger picture, except it's going to wipe out some farms, which uh, I consider pretty important. What's the current zoning and what's the proposed? Uh, it's a residential farm and it's an IS2. So proposed to go to industrial farm farming? Right. Okay, thank you very much for bringing this to our attention. Yep. <coughs> My name is Alan Johnson and I live at 3717 Northeast 126th Avenue in Argay Terrace, lived there 35 years. Uh, Ar Argay has uh, mostly been R7 and uh, we look forward to the new beach park and thank you council members for making that happen. We look forward to it. My concern is the area of, um, <clears throat> west of the proposed park to 122nd and between Beach and Shaver, uh, commonly known as the Rossi Farm. That is zoned R3. Uh, the uh, many members in the Argay neighborhood want to make that R5. We feel that would be more fitting to the neighborhood. Uh, thanks for hearing. <laughs> My name is Raven. I have three children. Uh, right now, I live at the apartment. Uh, I think for the long run, with the three kids, I am looking forward for the affordable housing. I wish I would like to be stay with my own house.
for us is we are came from the another country from here. So we don't know about in this culture and then we have a difficulty regarding about the language barrier. And also my husband is the only one who work. So we don't know how to buy a house. And then my wish is I want to stay my own house affordable with my uh, three children and then our healthy life. ကလေးတွေရန်ဆော်လာလေအင်းအပြင်အပလိုပမ်းလဲအပါမှန်နဲ့နေတာကလေးတွေရန်ဆော်လာဆိုတော့ဘယ်ချိန်မှာအစီမ